What's going on, people? I apologize. Um, apparently, having two different computers running the same information uh, froze it up and whatnot. So, all right, now I have to get back over to the invites and get people going here. So, apologize for that. Got some people starting to get in here. All right, all right. There we go. All right, sorry about the feedback. Um, apparently, you're not supposed to have two of them open at the same time. So I'm going to give everybody a couple minutes to get in here, and I'm going to get the invites resent out because I want to make sure everybody gets in here. So give me one moment. All right. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Good people. All right. Yes. Thank you guys for coming in here. All right. Let's see here. I'm just shooting out a new invite to uh, people's All right. All right. We're almost there, guys. Apologize for the inconvenience. One moment. Okay. Mute. There we go. Okay, sorry, almost happened again. Don't worry, we got you this time. All right, my old computer is uh, starting to die, so um, let's try to get another one. All right. All right, so I got a new link out to Brandon. Uh, Mike, um, hit me up, email me so I have your email. Yeah, I got a new computer, so the new one is uh, yeah, I just got brand, I sent Brandon a new another link, so hopefully he sees that one. And let's see here, um, Okay, and one more. Okay, all right. All right, sorry for all the mess and confusion, good people. Uh, we are back, we are back, we are back. Uh, let's see here. Does this mean that y'all be the pickle wolf hybrid? <laughs> um, I I guess in this day and age of of hybrids, um, yeah. <laughs> um, Elena says, "Oh, a new computer." Yeah, um, the old one. I have a the old, the other laptop was starting to act funny, so uh, it's kind of like a secondary thing, which I didn't know that you weren't supposed to have the streams on at the same time. So I apologize for that. So I just sent Brandon a new link and uh, A6 and Floyd. 
And I was looking for Mike's email, Mike the Sultan. If you're out there, um, email me so I can get you the link. Uh, Cause I can't find, oh, you, there you are. Yep. Okay. There it is. Good timing. All right. Sending him the link now. All right, Mike, you should have that. So everybody should have one now. All right. So, all right. So what do we have here in the comment section? So once again, sorry about that, guys. Um, I'll figure out the rest of that or whatever. I'll just make sure I never turn this one on again for in the same stream. Um, what are they saying? Ghostbusters don't cross streams. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, just what in the heck does James mean? Uh, the name James, I have no idea. Or do I mean, what do I mean personally? Or what does the name mean? All right. Let's see here. Um, hey, as a registered Cherokee, can I claim foreign national status? So you... Well, okay. Remember, from their perspective, you would be considered. Well, if you're if you are registered in Cherokee, then you are indigenous, so you already are, you are a national already. Um, they they would the the United States Corporation calls us foreign, so in that you already are a foreign national. So you much like the rest of us, you you already belong to something that's considered foreign. To the corporation you are a natural person but when you're doing anything where it requires licensing or um you know anything along those lines then that and in, in that moment you would be looked at as you know a 14th amendment u.s citizen um but otherwise yeah you already are a foreign national so yeah you can definitely claim it sounds like you've already claimed it through the cherokee just most of us can't do that <laughs> so we have to use the the laws, um, you know, that that support what we're saying. So yeah, you already have it. You're good. Um, can you talk about general delivery? So general delivery is the old old way of getting mail, where you basically put, like, if you give somebody your your name. So let's say like, okay, Bob Smith. You put general delivery, um, and let's say this is let's say you're giving this to um, the courthouse. You want to update your your address, right? So Bob Smith, general delivery, and then the ad the um, the zip code and location for the post office near you. What will happen is then the mail will go there, and they'll hold it for thirty days. Um, and you're supposed to pick it up. If you don't pick it up within that time, then they toss it. Um, what the post office really wants you to do, though, is to do it officially, which is to then go there and basically fill out the form and say that you want general delivery. Then they'll tell you, oh, you can only do it for 30 days. But in truth, you can continue to do it as long as you, you want to have that. Because anytime they send mail to that location, you know, and you have to go to your uh, local one and find out what their any if they have any specific codes that they want you to put for general delivery. But if you but if I were to put like general delivery and say I like lived in 90210, um it, it's gonna go to either all the it's gonna go to any of the locations, the uh, post offices in that area. So they might have a specific code. Um, but see your name is registered as having received mail in that location. So if you don't do anything it should go there because your name is on there and your zip codes on there. And then they're going to just hold it. You walk in and you say, Hey, is there any mail for, you know, Bob Smith? They're going to go in the back and find it. Okay. So you're supposed to go in and do it. The official way is to fill out the, uh, the general delivery form. Peacemaker. What's going on? Hey, Wolf. Um, ask At amazing to be amazing. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, there it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it started doing a feedback loop, and I tried to cancel the feedback loop, and had end up hitting the uh, stream button, and the, and it 
cancel it out. So I apologize for cutting it off. But uh, looks like we've got about the same amount of people here. So thank you guys for jumping back on and finding me. I appreciate you that. Sorry for that. For that. Um, Alan says, do you have to fill out the form every month at the post office uh, for general delivery? No, no. Um, once you have it established, they're going to if if you're if you if you give somebody your address and you put general delivery on there, not your home address, but the postal address with general delivery in your name, it should go there. Now, they might before I quote myself here. Talk to them at general or talk to them at the post office about general delivery. See what they they have to say, because they might want you to do it every month. But the way anybody else has ever done it that I know of, uh, once you do it, you're just it's going to keep rolling because it's all going to come in the same in the same way. All right. That wasn't me. <laughs> we're just having all the crazy little uh, things going on tonight. All right. So we're going to. Uh, Brandon should be on in the next 10 minutes, 15 minutes, if he's holding to time. Um, I also just sent him a new link so that, uh, just to make sure that he, uh, has the new, cause we're on the new feed now. Ask Pickle Man about his belief on the ability to access your trust account. All right. So, yeah, I can ask him more when he gets on here. Just pop that question up. Like I said, well, you guys will be able to ask him any questions you guys want once he jumps on. Um, as far as I know, and this is just educational information only. We actually literally are accessing our trust every day by either discharging things or when they access our trust to provide credit. OK, so we're actually already doing it. It's just we don't know if there's a way and or how to access it on our own for various projects and needs and things of that nature. That's the part that they're keeping from us. So I've heard lots of rumors on how to do things. I'm still researching everything that I get my hands on. Um, but until we have something solid, I don't want to put out any information that's going to get you, me, or anybody else in any trouble because it's, then it's not worth it. Um, uh, I have missed it. What's the point of general delivery, Miko JF says? Um, Miko, when you use either a post office box or general delivery, uh, educationally, that is then it makes it very difficult for anybody to locate you or to serve you. Um, so some people have even said that when you use those things, it puts you out of their, out of the corporate jurisdiction, because remember there's a difference between the post office and the United States postal service. Those are two separate entities, but they're merged into basically one. And from what I've heard, those things are then American and the private, so they can't go into that jurisdiction. That's what I heard. You guys can take it for what you want. <laughs> uh, the SESTA the Cesta KV Trust, yes. Yeah, they don't call it that. From what I understand, it's either called the General Trust or the, the Public General Trust, something like that. They don't call it that anymore. Ah, there he is. There's Mr. Pickleman. All right, all right, all right. Um, hey, Brandon, I just sent you a link. Um, it's coming from my Obsidian Black email. Uh, you should have a link in there. Click on that one. If not, I'll send you another one right away, and you can use that to jump in. Uh, all right, give me just one second, guys. Uh, it's going to the Brandon uh, Don't Be a Slave. I, I think that's the one you messaged me from. At least that's, I hope that's you. I hope someone's not pretending to be you. I get that all the time. Someone, people pretending to be me. So that being said, do not, do not, do not ever think I'm asking you guys for money in your inboxes or whatever else. All right. Here we've got the man, the myth, the legend himself. All right. So uh, before I bring him on, uh, Brandon, give me like five, 10 minutes. I'm going to bring Mike in. Uh, he's in the green room, and then I'm going to bring you in shortly after. Uh, so if you need to adjust anything, uh, go ahead. 
And uh, with that being said, I'm going to bring Mike in. Mike the Sultan, what's going on? You are. How are you? Can you hear me? Yeah, you're good, brother. Perfect. How are you, sir? Good, good. All's well. Wonderful. Uh, well, thank you for having me on. First of all, it's just uh, I'm, I'm new to all of this, uh, and uh, I want to I want to explain to you my process and how I'm doing. It just I have some questions here. Also, do you want me to ask some questions or what I what what I did thus far in the process? Um, just tell people a quick blurb about you know who you are, how you got started, and sure. then if you want to you know ask a couple of questions, I just want to give Brandon time to get warmed up. We got a couple of minutes before eight, and then we'll bring on the uh, the, the the show the showrunner here. <laughs> and then we'll be able to ask questions to both of you guys later on, or yeah, I got yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so just a quick overall. My name is Mikel. I'm uh, I, I just turned 23. Oh, I'm Albanian American. Uh, I recently got into all of this when my mother fell ill with a bad illness. She doesn't want me to explain to people. It's just, anyways. Uh, long story short, is uh, she has a mortgage and a lot of bills, and I've came across your videos before when I was working at a nursing home, and um, I'm like, oh, you know, just being skeptical. I'm like, no way, that's real. You know, and also being fearful that I come from a uh, immigrant background, naturalized when I was a minor uh, via my mother. I'm like, maybe this is not for me. This is for Americans born in the American soil and blah, blah, blah. So that was one of my questions. Am I still eligible or those individuals? But I'm still, I'm like two years later, almost two years later now, I'm like, it's, it's probably time to, to do and try this and seek the truth. And I enjoy your videos. You, those were the first ones. I, I've recently, the algorithm has brought forth other individuals such as Brandon and and uh, and Mansa, I believe that Brandon speaks of, and uh, uh, Christopher Hauser and so forth. And and my first step was to get the mortgage discharged off. And uh, some of your videos and other individuals say to use the 1099A, and that's how I did it. But now perhaps I did it wrong. Or perhaps I endorsed it the wrong way because I'm also learning about endorsing. Uh, that's why it could, it could have failed. Uh, I had I, I delivered it to the CFO of the company, the first mortgage company, and they had their uh, lawyers um, send a letter saying, uh, it, uh, it's "Essentially, long line is, is it's not a legal tender." Uh, and you know, me being fresh to the scene and not having all the right ways to articulate the, not only the, the laws, but to, to stand up for my rights and my mother's in this case. And so I just, I, I let it be. I was scared. I'm like, let's see what goes on. And what they did was they never returned the 1099A. So I, I sent them filed. I endorsed it in the back with my mom's signature, first name, semicolon, last name, comma, ben, uh, just Ben, a B-E-N-E. I hope that was the right way it was endorsed because now I'm here in other ways to endorse it. Anyways, I sent that back, but they never sent it back. And so they kept it and they sent the letter, uh, but they shortly sold this off to a uh, collective mortgage, Mr. Cooper. Uh, so I believe some of your videos say, say that if it's sold to a collective company, then this automatically uh, terminated the contract. So I, something along those lines. I don't want to misspeak. I'll let you. Yeah. So once again, okay. So, and this is just from, from what I've learned, the 1099A is more so you it's an acquisition or abandonment of of property so mm -hmm. the way the irs explained it to me and you know so take it for what it is is that when you use the a you're essentially asking for a percentage um up to 30 percent and can go back up to three years of what she's already paid towards the house so in order to if you were trying to discharge it and we'll have mr pickle on here he can talk about some things too because we always like to collaborate um, shout out to Kay's channel out there. I see you, brother. Um, is that a 1099C would be the better way to discharge a debt. Okay, so when somebody falls in, and, and we don't have time to go into all of the, the mortgage fraud and things that are done, and the other things that we could have done up to this point in time, uh, but the short version is that a 1099C is a cancellation of the debt. Now, what I tell people is that um, if you're going to use a 1099C, you are telling them that you want to cancel this debt, that you're insolvent, okay? But you have to remember the way they write up the forms is that they are the creditor. So you can't force them to do it. But what happens is if you're already in default, they by law are supposed to accept any method that you can, any offer that you can to pay off the debt, okay? Or to discharge it. So I would 
as educational information, I would try to use a 1099-C and send that to them instead. Now, some people have and do use also promissory notes because promissory notes are good for uh, paying off debts as well. And if you're going to send the promissory note, I would highly recommend that you send it with um, confirmation of delivery. So you've got proof that they received it, because if they don't return it by the UCC that they're all party to, whether they know it personally or not, uh, they it's still discharge. OK, so if they foreclose on somebody. All right. Uh, the problem that they have there is that that is a non-judicial foreclosure. OK, they didn't take it to the proper court. They're supposed to take it to the district court to actually make it a lawful thing. So what they're doing is they're doing it on the corporate level on the state side so that they can kind of do what they did. So they they realized what you were doing and they were like, uh, before he catches on, let's just pass the hot football or the nuclear football. So did they um, collect the money? I'll, I'll, I'll allow me to cut you off. Did they ever yeah. cash that? Is there a way that I can request like the the tr the transaction details, or it, it was never cashed because I never filed the UCC? Well, in the principal or... it's it's not so much that they, from what I know, and I could be wrong on this, but it's not so much that they cash it. It's that they have oh. the ability to either take that and um, see when you do that, they're supposed to provide you with a percent up to 30 percent of what they were supposed to pay on so in other words when you're when you pay your money they're not paying a, a percentage of it in tax they're considering it to be a private transaction all right so when that happens you're entitled to that back so they're either supposed to take that 1099a and provide you with that funds or they're supposed to take it and, and pay the irs okay that's that's how the irs agent told me that's supposed to work with the 1099A in those matters. Um, so, but can you go in and get that? It depends on if they really did it. You can try to request the information. They're obviously going to try to hide it as much as possible. So, um, so, so, so let me interrupt once again. So what I did with this new company, Mr. Cooper, I sent the payment coupon that they sent me, the, the, the stub. And now I'm doing it the endorsement way, not, not the 1099A or C. Okay, uh, and so I the re remittance? With, okay, would yeah. that be the problem? Okay, okay with, uh, with the receipt? Okay. Okay. Uh, and so, I endorsed it in the back, and they sent a letter. So, so I sent it to the CFO with RFD, and they, for some reason with RFD, it took way longer. It got lost in the system, and they, I even had the uh, receipt requested, and even that was torn off. So, that, so, that, so they never signed the actual card. Uh, they just signed the electronic, but still, uh, it, it shows delivery. Uh, so after I sent the, the, the documentation that I drafted, uh, let me show, because I have it here. I don't want to hold too much of your time. I know he's like, what, what the hell are you talking about? Essentially, I, I, I drafted two documents, one POA, power, power of attorney, and essentially what that one was, was to grant uh, the CFO, the trustee, essentially, uh, authority to transfer the principal balance uh to the principal account for the principal name and establish blah, blah blah and i told them that this was uh well i don't want to give too much details but essentially yeah yeah, yeah. doing that and that shows this was accepted then do the such and such and zero out the accounts and you know deliver a proof of uh, completion via so, rural free so delivery. the the remittance process um once again that usually is people usually send those to the there, there's a couple different departments. Either people will send it back to the same department, which that's been hit or miss. Usually these days people are sending it to the um, CFO. Uh, well, the indentured trustee who, who is supposed to do more so of that type of work in the first place. The CFO is going to is he's not going to even see it. It's, it's going to go to one of his underlings and then they may or may not send it to where it's supposed to go. Um, so. The remittance, remittance process in the old days was, was easy. You could just send them right back. Now, because so many people are doing these things, they're making it more difficult. They're hiding it. They're all, all these things. They don't want everybody and their mother doing it, uh, you know, because then everybody everybody else is going to then jump on the bandwagon and do it. So they're, I haven't done them in a while, but the last time I did it, probably about eight months, nine months ago, roughly. Uh, the one place said, and uh, I sent it to what well, I think I just mailed it right back to the, the, the payment, normal payment department. 
One said they don't accept these. Um, but then they said, but if they did, I didn't endorse it correctly. So apparently they've changed something. And the other one said that it's not endorsed properly. They didn't say they didn't accept it. They just said they I didn't endorse it properly. So, and of course, they didn't tell me what I needed to correct. So um, here, let's see here. Uh, Jetpack jumps in. He says, just send it to the legal department and have them forward it to the proper party. You can do that too. The legal department, because they're the ones who are going to know uh, exactly what it is and how, and what should be done. So yes, that's a very good um, uh, way to do it. Yeah, good idea to send it to the legal department. Yep. Appreciate you, so Jetpack. So you you in, the in the mail, just endorse that in the back. Restricted endorsement. Buy for uh, and let me see because I also have all the information here. Uh, essentially, just do it like that. Do that. Do write the like the codes in the in the front of it because I've seen so many methods of it done. What's the cleanest way to do it? The so that's not one of the remittance is not one of my specialties. It's something I've did years ago, and obviously they've changed the program, so I can't give you personally the best code because otherwise I would have done it myself when it got rejected. You know, about almost a year ago now. Um, so if anybody does have uh, has had success with the remittance, uh, share that information in the comments section, uh, including, you know, the code front, back, et cetera, et cetera. Because I'll be honest, like I said, if I don't know it, I'm not going to lie. I, and I don't have that. Like I said, that's not my specialty. But um, with that being said, brother, I don't want to take up too much time because I don't know how much time Brandon has. So I want to get him on here. So we're going to jump to that and I'm going to let him have the floor if you if he's open to you answering a question. We'll get to that. We'll get to the people in the comment section. So with that being said, without further ado, I, um, I want to bring Brandon Joe Williams, aka Mr. Pickle or One Stupid F. <laughs> My, mind you guys, watch, watch the language on here because we, we all know how YouTube is and whatnot. Um, but other than that, uh, let's bring him on stage. Mr. Brandon Joe Williams. How's it going, brother? Yo, with the bad wolf. What's up, brother? <laughs> <laughs> Good to talk to you directly. Yo, what's up, man? It's been a while. Facebook and whatever. <laughs> I know, I know. We, we, we're we ghosts of each other a little bit for a long time, but um, I've sent a lot of people your way, man. Have you been getting a lot of people uh, over the past year and a half? Yeah, I would definitely say that um, there's been a significant amount of people who've been like, oh, hey, yeah, Brandon sent me or I've watched some of your stuff or he re recommended. So I definitely appreciate you. Um, I don't know if you have time to watch my stuff, but I've definitely thrown out some shots to you um, and your your way across the platforms. I've so, had some people send me some of your stuff and, and I used to watch your stuff a, a while ago, but recently I've just been, I don't know if you know, I, I've just been kind of totally tied into litigation. So I haven't really been doing much of anything yeah i haven't yeah, been doing hardly any reading at all mm -hmm. so it's just kind of you know it, it's easy to like get lost in all of this mania and then you're just locked in right here like even for me i've got tons of books i can't even get to read i got like <laughs> I 20 on the floor <laughs> you know what i mean and and all i do is i i come in here and i do my consultations i take care of all the people's needs and then i'm like but all the books, you know, I got a scene right here. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry. I'll get you guys when I can, you know? Yeah. So, but uh, yeah. So tell us, uh, tell the people who you are for those people who don't know you and tell them where they can find you on Facebook and your website, uh, what you do and like how you got to be here and what, you know, just everything. Just, just, just throw it out there, brother. The floor is yours. Thank you. Well, first and foremost, before I get into that, I wanted to mention something about what you guys were saying. I think, um, because I've been listening for a while. I, I actually heard your, I've been actually been listening to your feed here for about a, a half an hour before even six. I, I think I got on around 525. I was listening to the first feed and then it kicked out and then I was on the new feed. Um, and and just, a, just a quick thing, I'm seeing so many fractionalizations and I'm seeing so much desperation in terms of processes, processes, processes. And, you know, to tell you the truth, I personally believe, and, and I've just, you know, I'm working with people every single day, kind of like how you are all over the world, uh, constantly getting messages, constantly looking at documents, looking at paperwork. I have some clients of my own, not very many. I take on very few clients because uh, we do a lot together. It's not like a quick thing. It's like a lot. We, I, my clients and I, we, we ended up, you know, we're, we're filing, you know, tons of lawsuits for every single client. We're going after huge institutions. It's, it's, it's just kind of like a, it's a big undertaking to take on a client with what I do. So. I only have a few and I'm going to keep it that way for right now until we can 
expand uh, the law firm more and more and more. I'm actually uh, in t- in touch with some other people who might be coming on to help us file more lawsuits, including even uh, Dr. Andy Kaufman himself, which is really exciting. Uh, we were already on a podcast together. And uh, he may actually work with us, possibly, uh, in the future for pro se litigants and people who are looking to file their own litigation, which is pretty wild because he's a he's a big celebrity in his space, which is totally right. not legal, right? Um, it's it's like health health related, and um, I'm gonna be meeting him. I'm gonna be going to the uh, a confluence event, which is gonna be my first in person speaking event. It's gonna be from April 5th until April 8th. It's confluenceevent.com, and uh, uh, Dr. Kaufman will be there. Uh, a bunch of other really big names are going to be there. Um, I'll be there the whole time from the 5th to the 8th. So I'll be meeting a lot of these people in person. I have some really big podcasts scheduled with uh, Luke Story, with Alex Zek, and another guy named Kyle something. I forget his name. But uh, that time period right in there, late March, early April, I'm going to be doing a lot of really exciting things. So we'll see kind of what hatches out from all of that in terms of how we're going to expand this out. But um, to get back to my original point, I actually believe that almost every process that you're going to find anywhere, and, and I know that's kind of a bold statement, is workable. And what I mean by that is I think, I think a vast majority of, of almost everything I've ever seen by people who mean well and look for themselves and read and look up words in a dictionary and they really do have an interest in understanding this stuff, they're all workable. The problem is not lack of workable processes. The problem is lack of enforcement. And that's why I have shifted my, I have shifted my attention completely to enforcement, like 99%. Like I don't even read about processes. I don't even listen to processes. Like I don't even, I have almost nothing to do with processes. It's like, I, I'm testing this out as a theory right now, and I think it's going to work, where you, you issue whatever your orders are one time, and then you give them maybe 30 days, because you don't want to be like a dick about it, right? So you give them 30 days, you issue your orders, whatever it is, whether it be discharging debt, whether it be, you could even sue the Department of State. People don't realize that uh, we're doing tests. I have a guy right now who, who has a green card that expired, and we're doing a test where we're just having him confer nationality of a state upon himself or upon the ends legis after birth by any means whatsoever. And we're, we, I have a whole explanatory statement that I actually made and issued for free. And it's got like 22 USC 2121 there and like all the good stuff, you know. Uh-huh. And uh, we're doing tests where, you know, if the Department of State isn't willing to give someone who has pledged their allegiance to the United States, which in my explanatory statement, you might find it interesting if you haven't seen it yet. If you look up the definition of the word allegiance, it says that it can be uh, qualified or unqualified. So I actually wrote a qualifying allegiance statement. Nice. So basically, the qualifying allegiance statement is very simple. It's, it's the definition of a nation and the definition of the word peace are both where you have a situation where there's internal tranquility within the group and there's external tranquility that's delivered externally by that group. And that's basically the whole definition of a foreign government as per 18 U.S.C. 11, right? And the thing is, is um, uh, I qualified mine and anybody else who wants to use my explanatory statement. uh, It's a qualified allegiance because how can you have allegiance to a, a nation that isn't by definition a nation and it has to be at peace in itself to be a nation, right? So my qualifying allegiance statement is basically, you know, look, I I pledge allegiance to the United States as long as the United States is a nation. In order to be a nation, it has to be at peace. If it does anything that's not at peace, I'm not even the one removing my allegiance. You guys actually are because you can't have allegiance for a nation that doesn't exist. So so that's the way I, I worded the allegiance section, right? So it's like, I'm not a citizen, but I have allegiance to the United States, but that allegiance is qualified as per the following. And that's kind of how I have the, the explanatory statement. Now, using the explanatory statement that way, my thought is the Department of State has to give anybody a passport. Even if they're in Germany and they don't speak any English, if they pledge allegiance, qualified or unqualified to the United States, they are entitled to fill out an application, a DS-11, to receive their U.S. passport. Now... We are doing some tests, and the passport office is not necessarily denying these passports, but they are like slowing down the process and asking additional questions. And again, what's the issue here? 
it's the, it's the same issue we're having everywhere, especially with negotiable instruments and, and remittance. It's enforcement. Enforcement, right. enforcement, 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 right? Now, I've been studying litigation for many, many months, and I'm about ready to drop th three more lawsuits. I, my first one is kind of a really goofy one that kind of fell in my lap, and it's a lot of people don't really totally get it, and it is pretty kind of wild. I, I would almost go so far as to say just kind of ignore that first one. It, it's, it's good, especially for somebody who's a little bit more knowledgeable with this stuff. But these next three are like psh, right along, right along the, the, the gap, like literally okay. like boom, like right. You guys are going to see it and you're going to be like, this is the new prototype for enforcement. It two, three, and four are going to be like literally no joke, the prototypes for all remittance enforcement. So it's really simple. Let's say you want passport. You send in your DS 11, you get a rejection you're now going to go into litigation with the Department of State. Very, very simple. You're going to say in your in your complaint, which is the lawsuit terminology for the first thing you file as a complaint, it's I sent to the DS-11 as per 22 USC 212 and all these different things. I'm entitled to a passport. I did give qualified allegiance. I meant what I said. I signed it under penalty of perjury. I don't know what's going on. What's the deal? So the way that litigation is going to go down is I gave you these orders. They're lawful orders. You rejected lawful orders. And now not only are you going to do what I asked you to do, but you're also going to pay me now for wasting my time. And that's, and that's it. We're just going to run that. We're just going to yeah. run that over and over. And what I'm doing is I'm, is I'm sending in to credit card companies and I'm just like, reject me, reject me, reject me. And I'm just trying to get all these rejection letters because then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start going after all of them with litigation. You want those rejection letters, right? I just got a rejection letter today from a city, a city attorney. <laughs> I sent in a bill of exchange to my utility company and they sent it back and it's literally stamped received and it has a cover letter and it's from the city attorney and it says we're not going to accept it's like oh this is perfect this is evidence of dishonor i can go to i can go into litigation so easily now i have all the evidence i need i don't even need to do any work it's all done for me already so the thing is, is it's just going to be it's issue orders, get a rejection, litigate, get the orders completed and get paid for wasting your time and we're just going to run that everywhere every single agency every single government agency department of state everybody you name it everywhere right so that's kind of like where i'm heading that's kind of like as people many people know i've been doing a lot of goofy things over the years trying to get enforcement like sending polaroids of me and silly outfits and writing love letters and i just done a lot of things to try to get enforcement and uh uh it's just totally hit or miss i mean you could send in a 1099a you could send in a uh uh, a properly endorsed, uh, special endorsed instrument. You could send in a bill of exchange. You could send in a, a promissory note. You could send in a DS-11. You could do anything in any of these areas. And someone will do it the same way we're all doing it. And they're going to get a letter saying that, you know, all we can give you is a U.S. citizen passport, which is so fucking insane. Uh, 22 CFR 51.3, 22 USC 212, these are very, very clear. What, what are the only thing they give passports to? U.S. nationals. Right in the CFR, it says passports are only issued to U.S. nationals. What's the definition of a U.S. national? AUSC 1101 subsection A22. There's two yeah. definitions. One is a U.S. citizen. Another is somebody who, while not a citizen of the United States, owes permanent allegiance to the United States. All right. Yeah. Th then you have the definition of the word permanent, which means fucking not nothing. Sorry, curse there. Right, right. <laughs> it means nothing. Permanent means nothing. If you look up the definition of the word permanent there, it means that uh, permanent and lasting na nature, but it can be uh, eliminated at any point in time by either you or the United States in accordance with law. So it literally means nothing. They just throw it in there to kind of m confuse people, I guess. Yeah. Permanent, that word, you can just remove it. You can just remove it out of Title VIII because it just doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. They put it in there to say like, oh, well, I don't want to, you know, no, no, no. The thing is, is that you can issue a qualified allegiance statement and there is no permanency at all whatsoever in your statement. And, that, and, that, that, and you can issue that statement and tomorrow you can decide to take back that statement and that's still considered permanent as per the definition of permanent. So it's not permanent. It's totally temporary or permanent, depending on whatever you want and depending whatever they want, because they have an out, too, if you look at the definition of permanent. So the thing is, is that, you know, um, even with my utility company, 
I went in and I told them, you know, I don't have a social security number anymore. I thought it was mine, but it's not. It's the ends legis. So I wanted to get rid of that. I've been handling a lot of that recently, kind of in my own head and in my, a lot of my contracts. And I said, what other options do I have? And they said, well, we can close out that account. And if you have a passport, we can open up a new account under the passport. I said, okay. They said, you need to come down here physically in person to do that. I said, okay, fine. I'll come down there. Can I come right now? And I went down there. And the lady was blown away. She's like, well, how did you do this? And how did you guys told him I closed down my, my social security account. She goes, how did you do that? And blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm sitting here. We don't know if it's going to be there. I'm putting all this money into it. You know, I kind of talk, I talk, I try to say things in a way that normal people will really get it. You know what I mean? So I'm like, you put all this money in there. I mean, dude, I drive motorcycles. I don't even know if I'm going to be alive in two weeks. You know what I mean? Like I was like telling her, <laughs> telling her all this stuff, being kind of goofy and fun. Right. And she was blown away. She's like, I want to do this. I want to do this. And I, there was a bunch of people waiting. Right. And, and she like, wouldn't let me leave. We like processed the papers and there's, she was sitting there asking me all these questions. And like all the people that were waiting were like on the edge of their seat. And I'm thinking like, no one's asking me to leave. No one's asking me to hurry up They They want me to stay there. She's calling in her supervisor. The supervisor comes in. They're all excited about my new, my new account. They're all excited about processing an account through a passport, which they almost never do. And we opened up the account and I got my first bill of exchange. And I mean, this is, it was very, very easy. It was very, very simple. Um, so, you know, but, but doing administrative things from my experience is pretty simple. I never had any issues with the passport. I never had any issues with a lot of things. I had a little bit of an issue with the Social Security Administration. They gave me a bit of a hard time, but we ended up sorting that out. The way that I finally handled the Social Security Administration was I went in there and I got a little bit upset because it was the second time I had been in there. And I pulled up uh, 18 USC 911, which is uh, uh, it's up to three years in prison if you falsely represent yourself as a U.S. citizen. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I put it up against the window and I said, you need to understand something. I said, I am not a U.S. citizen. And if you force me to say that I am, or if you put anything on these documents, I'm not going to fucking prison for three years. You are. And that's when she was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. And she processed it. You stamp that, you stamp that paper right now, stamp it. And she stamped it. And I said, give it to me. And she gave it to me and I, that's when I left. But I was, I was a little bit irritated by that point because I had sent them two parcels. I had gone in there two times and they weren't like super rude with me, but they were kind of like, they were just being very short with me and they weren't telling me anything. And they were just being really, they just, it just got to a point where I got irritated and that's how I finally nailed it down. Uh, and I realized it's actually a very effective way of doing it, by the way, um, even with like an employer. You just say, hey, man, look, you know, 18 U.S.C. 911, you're going to put U.S. citizen on this as per 18 U.S.C. 4. I have to report it as a felony. 18 U.S.C. 4 says that if you're aware of a felony, you don't report it. You become you become uh, an accessory uh, to that accessory. felony. Yeah. So as per 18 U.S.C. 4, I have to report this felony up to three years. I'm not going to prison. You think I'm going to prison. You sadly you're sadly mistaken, bro. I'm not going to prison. <laughs> I mean, you know. So that that's how I've been recommending people to handle their employers and stuff like that. So, okay. Um, but again, like I said, everything, I, I, I truly believe everything works. I truly believe that you can make anything work. I believe that you can make literally anything work and, and there is no patterns as to what works better or what you I mean. Some people have had sex with a uh, success with the 1099A. Some people have had success with promissory notes. Some people have had success with bill of exchange and people sit around and they say, which one should we use and which one's better and which one's that? No one knows the answer to that question because the thing is, is that they're all workable. It's just, are you going to put in the work necessary to enforce the orders of which you have? So you, the problem is not what, what process are you using? Right. The problem is, is that you delivered a series of commands. They balked at those commands, and then you go, oh, well, okay, I guess this doesn't work anymore, and you walked away. That's the problem. That That's is the, the problem. issue. So, so let's, say, let's say someone's in the doorway, and you say, move out of the doorway. And they say, I'm not moving out of the doorway. You're crazy. I, you, know, you're, what, what, you know, no. And you go, oh, okay. And you just stand there, and you're just staring at someone in the doorway. And now you're, like, going to ask them in a different way. You're going to ask them the same, uh, could you please move out of the doorway? And they go, uh, no, you, you, you can go around the other way. Okay, okay. You need to move out of the doorway right now. I need you to move the door out of the right now. That's the angry way. You're do it's like another process, right? Right, right. But the thing, it gets to a certain point where you, you put a gun against their head and you say, move the F out of the effing doorway right now or I'm going to blow your brains all over the wall. Okay, okay, okay. That's what you're doing. I feel like that's what you're doing in litigation because if they don't follow your orders and they are lawful orders, you can actually put in an order 
to hold the defendant in contempt of court. And you can actually literally have people picked up by the sheriff's office and placed in a prison cell. Yeah. And to me, it's like, if you're in my doorway and I tell you to move out of the doorway, you don't want to move out of the doorway, no problem. I'm going to have the sheriff come, arrest you, and put you in a prison cell over here on the other side of town. That way I can walk through my doorway. Yep, I totally agree because you, you answered a couple things there and you showed a couple things where it's like the most of these low-level functionaries, I like to refer to them as, um, they don't know what's going on. The average American doesn't know remarkably anything about what's going on all this is is increasing in awareness but the biggest issue like you said uh, is enforcement um it's i've like you said i've seen success with all of these processes yeah exactly um, me too very few of them have i not seen you know like like you might have tried one didn't work for you but like you said say i talked to other people all day is all i do and yeah. like yeah i did no problem you know I've seen um, goofy stuff. I've seen goofy stuff that legit, like, really doesn't, shouldn't work. Like, really. Right. Like, and, and they're like, oh, yeah, we'll take that. And I'm like, I'm over here like, wait, what? That, that is, I mean, are you, what? Like, what? Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I've seen some wild stuff. And I'm like, hey, if it works, keep, hey, keep it rolling. Keep yeah, it rolling, I mean, you know. I, I feel like it's this, it, you study a lot. You really focus in, you really know what it is. You really get something nailed down, whatever it is that you want to do. You just nail it down. You'd be very good and very knowledgeable at whatever it is that you want to do, whatever process you want to do. And then you just, when you start going for it, you just, you go all the way. You start to move the ball down the, down the, the, the football field. And once you start moving that ball down the football field, you just commit to yourself. You're committing to your yeah. process and you're committing to yourself and you're saying, this is what I want to do. This is the process I want to use. I'm, I'm putting on my gear. I'm stepping onto the football field. And when you start moving that ball down the field, you're just, that's it. There is no, there is no failure. There is no anything. You're going to put people in prison. You're going to do whatever it takes. You're going to, you're going to be there uh, serving documents yourself, serving summons yourself, serving search warrants yourself, serving subpoenas yourself, getting the U.S. Marshals involved to service your process of, of your documentation. Yes. You're paying the, you know, you're paying for your litigation. You're doing whatever it takes, and you're moving that ball down the field to the 30 yard line, the 40 yard line, the 50 yard line, and then eventually the 100 yard line. And and for me, I redefine the definition of the word remedy. I think it's really pathetic that myself and everybody else in this movement has been begging for these very very simple things. I think that right. the time, I think that time is over, and I think that the new era is. For every minute you waste of my time and for every minute you fail to follow my orders, the, the damages that you will be suffering are going to grow exponentially and continue to grow until you finally follow my orders. And if that means it's a $10 million, $20 million damages because I had to fight you for a year and a half to get you to follow the orders that I wanted you to follow, so be it. And I'm okay yeah. with that. And it's to I, I'm the one in the driver's seat. I'm the one who's just going to – I grab on. I grab another arm and I twist and I twist slowly and slowly and slowly and slowly. You don't, you don't, it's, it's like anything else. You don't, you don't, you don't go to your kid who dumped a bunch of garbage on the ground accidentally and just rip his arm right off clean. Right, you know, it's right. like a little spank, a little spank, you know, maybe a stern talking to, and then maybe the next gradient's a little spank. And then, you know, we can go from there. Right. And, but the thing is, is that, you know, it's just like anything else. You grab their arm and you start to twist and you twist a little bit. And then a little bit more, and then more, and then more, and then more, and then over the course of a long period of time, you're now breaking their arm, and then they keep going, and you're going to rip the, the thing off. You know what I mean? And that's that's all it is. It's that simple. Like I feel like once once you really feel good about a process, you're the one who feels good about the process. Okay, get the, get the freaking process completed. That's the problem. That's what no one seems to be able to do. Yeah, it seems like there's a lot of people um, that when it comes to Either they don't know how to enforce it or they're scared to enforce it. You know, that that's usually the combination of it or in putting them to task. And a lot of it, people get a lot of these processes, but they don't have like you get somebody's file or whatever else. It's there's unless there are people like you and me who've done it and rebutted them and gone to task with it. A lot of these files don't have the remedy behind what to do next. They don't have any of the codes, the teeth. 
yeah. of, of the enforcement of it. So that's why I tell people there's a difference between somebody taking like my materials or your materials and then, you know, and I've seen it countless times, resharing them, resharing them, whatever else. Okay, that's fine. But we have the experience to know, hey, this is what you need to do next. You know, like even right before yeah. I got on here, I was last minute helping somebody out in the foreclosure scenario and some other stuff. And it's like, you got to use the codes. You have to beat them with their own things and you can't be afraid to sue them in court. Sure, it'll cost you, you know, X amount of dollars, you know what I mean, and some time, but make them pay for your time and having to do that in the first place because they're not doing what they're supposed to do. They are the public trustees. They're the public officers. They're supposed to do what we tell them. We're not supposed to be the cowardly lion. You know, we are the lion, you know, and exactly. that's the part that I've been telling people that if we need to, you know, chug the courts full of, of cases, court cases until they go, OK, we yield, we'll start, we'll get our stuff together, our act right. And that's what we have to do because we've been nice. And first of all, we shouldn't even have to be nice as Americans, but OK, we'll play that game. We've we've been nice. You've bent us over. We've grabbed their ankles as, as a country. <laughs> You know what I mean? No reach around, no kiss on the back of the neck, no bus transfer. <laughs> and now we're realizing, <laughs> now we're realizing what's going on. We're like, hey, whoa, wait a minute, Uncle Merv, you know, hey, uh, I'm not taking this anymore. <laughs> you know? Exactly. And I so, and I think one of the big issues that that people have everywhere is that they they really believe, and 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 I thought so too for a while, but if you really sit down and think of it this way, it's, it's actually kind of hilarious. People really believe that. The guy or the lady, usually it's a lady, who's sitting in some call center, you know, someplace where if I had that job, I'd probably lay in traffic or on train tracks. And mm -hmm. they're getting, you know, $15, $16, $17 an hour in a cubicle. And they're, they're opening up these envelopes to process checks that are from probably old people because mostly it's, it's boomers and stuff like that sending in paper checks, especially nowadays. And let's say there's a problem with these checks. They have to call these people and, and they can barely use their phones. And a lot of times, they, you know, I used to work in an, in an area where I worked with a lot of boomers and they've got their TV on in the background and it's blastingly loud because they can barely hear it. And then they pick up the phone while the TV is blasting <laughs> and they're trying to, oh, hello, is this Mr. Bola? And it's like they can't talk to the guy and the TV's blasting. And, you know, uh, that's your life. It, you really believe that if these people knew that they could just endorse their bills and send them back and, and they would get processed, they'd be out of there. If they had like one brain cell left, they'd be like, well, if that's the case, I'm out of here, boys. Slam the table, break, break the computer monitor, you know, take the keyboard and smash it through the computer monitor, go like this. I'm out of here, boys. It's like Office Space. It's like the, it's like the movie Office Space, you know? Yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's like, you know... Uh, grab the grab the printer, take it with you. Uh, go out into some uh, uh, little field and 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 with all your buddies, the the printer that always jams up like an office space, and just smash it with with hammers and and and. <laughs> so it's sort of like it's sort of like an office space thing. It's like if any of these people had any clue about any of this, they wouldn't be there. Come on, I mean, and you could say the same thing about the IRS people too. I mean, if they had any clue about any of this, they wouldn't be there. Period. Well, and it's interesting. One of the things that, that stuck out to me is that how they're making a, a pretty big push to get people to no longer use paper billing. They want everybody to go to paperless billing. And we know exactly why. Mm -hmm. We know we know why for the two main reasons. You know what I mean? Well, they so, still issue all the all the paper bills can be downloaded right off of your online login, just by the way. So a lot of people like freaking out like. Oh my God, I have to switch to paperless. I mean, not necessarily. Just log into your online login, download your statements and print them off at home. And then boom, there you go. Now you got bills of exchange, endorse them and send them in. It's not like, it's not very complicated. Even the coupons right. are on there. Everything's on there. Yeah. The exactly. same thing that you would be getting if you weren't on paperless is available in your online login in color, literally as though you got it in the mail. I mean, I do non-paperless because it saves me having to do a little printing myself but i mean what's it matter yeah i mean like like you said earlier uh there's always going to be a way to get it done there has there has to be because these things see they're even even though they don't like to talk about they're still held to serve they're still held to to these to the law okay and the law that the, all the laws 
So it has to be there. But what they're doing, just like I say on my on my YouTube videos, as we move, they move. I mean, as we figure out, hey, this is how you do the remittance process. Woo, woo, you know, they mail you that. Do it this way. Uh, they then go, uh, so we're getting a lot of that. How do we curve that? And then all of a sudden it mysteriously changes. Now it's trying to go to digital. But like you said, you still can print them right off the accounts. They just want you to work harder for it instead of them sending you the very thing. Now it takes you going into your account because they know people are lazy and they know that, you know, okay, do you have the printer? Do you have the ink? Print it. And then you do it on your nickel completely instead of them. And they save, you know, their what, 40 cents or 20 cents or whatever they, they, you know, 15 cents bulk rate or whatever they got going on. It's no different than the passport stuff, you know, where in the old days, if you wanted to be a national, you just got your passport in general and you circled the word national. Yeah. That was it. I That's think it was the, you that showed me one time a long time ago. There was check boxes. That's how I actually started. I wouldn't be in, in any of this and all. So for me, the quick version was, is that when I was nine years old, I was in Boy Scouts and I was um, my scout master would never salute the American flag with the gold fringes on there. And I and so I, I didn't know why he wouldn't do that. So just being a little 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 butthole, I was like, you know what, I'm going to piss him off a little bit. So. I ran in front of him and I started saying the Pledge of Allegiance to that flag, right? This man lost his vertical. I mean, you'd have thought I slept with his wife and kicked his dog, you know what I mean, <laughs> and, and pissed in his cornflakes. He was he was irate. And he finally calmed down. And he told me about all of, not all of this, but he opened the door with that information on the Title IV flag, what the, the legal definition of it, et cetera, et cetera. And um, then 10 years later, I didn't, I didn't really do anything at that point in time. It was just, it's a whatever. I was, I was still gathering bits. But at 19, when I got my passport, in, in that era, the on the DS-11, page two of two, number 11, it said, are you a U.S. citizen or are you a state citizen? If it wasn't for that question, I would probably be in the audience listening to you guys and probably think, oh, they're crazy. There's nothing there. There's no such thing as this. And then after... That, and then I found the uh, Foreign Affairs Manual, Section 505.2, where it has the mm -hmm. 09 all code. And it says it's straight out in there. So it's like, it's yeah. their stuff. Or the GPO Styles Manual, 2016, it says right in there, the natives of the states. Mm -hmm. You guys are, we are all private. We are all Native Americans. It's right there. But you have to want it. You have to find it. And that's what people like me and Brandon do is we go out, we do these things, and we try to smooth it out for the next person so that like generations before us so made it a little easier for us we're now in the driver's seat we're making it a little bit better for those people behind us but we need people like that to pick up the ball and enforce these things and further it along for the next generation or we can just call it a day and they can just corporatize our whole our land and then we're just all going to be you know shackle number one two and three Mm -hmm. So, question. Yeah. Allow me. Sorry, about it, guys. Uh, it just can an, can an individual who has been naturalized, as I spoke earlier, uh, while a minor, can he step aside from this corporation and get their state citizenship, uh, state passport? Okay. And then, Brendan, you also spoke about. Well, well, uh, hold on a second. The definition of naturalization is probably one of the most powerful things ever in all of this information. The definition of naturalization comes from eight USC one one zero one subsection A twenty three. And I believe I have it fully memorized. It's uh, naturalization is the conferring of a state, uh, the conferring of nationality of a state upon a person after birth by any means whatsoever. So just as easily as you naturalized into United States, which is located in the District of Columbia, you can just as easily confer nationality of a different state upon a person. What persons do we have? All of your corporations, all of your trusts, all of your associations, all of your partnerships, you as an individual, sort of, kind of, that's kind of up for debate. And then the ends legis, okay. which is your all caps name. These are all persons. You can actually naturalize all of those various persons by conferring the nationality of any state you would like each of the individual persons to have upon those persons after birth by any means whatsoever. Birth meaning the creation date of that particular entity. So I have, I live my life through a whole bunch of trusts, 
Okay. I also have a corporation that I don't even really use anymore, but it just kind of sits there as a shell. That's a person. My trust number one is a person. Trust number two is a person. Trust number three is a person. Trust number four is a person. My ends legis is a person. And then I'm still up for debate on this, but you know, in litigation, you, you, you kind of operate as though you're an individual, even though I know there's a lot of information that that's kind of iffy. But I, being in litigation and kind of the direction that I'm going, I treat myself basically as an individual, essentially, in a lot of the litigation. Otherwise, what are you going to do? You're never going to be able to litigate. You, you, you go too far into that and you just you can't even operate in the courts anymore. So you're just kind of fucked. If you want to go in that direction and you want to operate in the courts and you want to get the courts assistance and you want to put people in prison, you essentially operate as though you are a natural person, okay? So you have all these persons, right? And let's say you want to create 10 more uh, corporations. Okay, now you've got 18 persons. So the conferring of nationality of a state upon a person after birth by any means whatsoever. You can create 50 different corporations or trusts, and you can name them Brandon Joe Williams 1, Brandon Joe Williams 2, or you can name them Brandon Joe Williams California, Brandon Joe Williams, Utah, Brandon Joe Williams, Texas, Brandon Joe Williams, North Dakota, Brandon Joe Williams, South Dakota, Brandon Joe Williams, Florida. And then you can confer the nationality of each of those trusts with their corresponding states. And now officially you've just naturalized each of those persons into each one of those states. And you can actually litigate in state law, in state courts through all of those persons in all the different state courts over the entire 50 states of the union, including Puerto Rico, including Guam, including the Virgin Islands, and including Washington, D.C., and including American Samoa. So we don't actually have 50 states in the corporate world. We have 50 plus all the U.S. territories. So you have Washington, D.C., Guam, Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, American Samoa, and then I think there's like one more. So it's actually 56 states. So you could actually create 56 persons. You can confer the nationality of a state to every single individual person, and you could operate in all 56 states across the entire incorporated landscape of, of the United States plus the US territories. And you can actually operate in state and federal court using all of those persons by naturalizing all those persons into those states which is like no one's ever heard of anyone doing anything like this, but that's kind of the direction that I'm heading. And in the jurisdiction and venue section of all the lawsuits, that's what I'm doing. I'm putting Brandon Joe Williams, registered trademark, uh, Brandon Joe Williams, normal, normal spelling, confers the nationality of state of California upon Brandon Joe Williams, registered trademark, after birth, by any means whatsoever. Hey. Brandon Joe Williams as a person is literally wherever you say he is. It's that simple. Right. And you can you, you can put him in DS11. You can put him in and you can take him out. Put him in, take him out. You want the nation of the bad wolf? Confer that. Boom, he's over here now. Boom, he's over here now. It's like playing Monopoly, but you can just pick up the piece and place it wherever you want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so me being you, I just want to like like uh, conceptualize. So essentially, when you have the DS11 for the passport application, you just put their uh, state citizenship, and then you can. That add in that letter conferring, like I guess not you, you write it, you say I entity this, declare this. Because the thing country. is, is that the, the main problem, in my opinion, with everybody on the DS11, and I'm sure James would agree with me, is you're you're sort of you're sort of asking the Department of State to confer nationality upon your ends legis after birth by any means whatsoever. But the thing is, that's not what it says. You, 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 if you ask them to do it, they can say no. But when you tell them, I've already done it, it's a done deal, and I'm just letting you know after the fact. And, I, and the Ensley just, uh, ENS just pledges allegiance to the United States, and here's a qualified statement as to how that works. Yeah. Follow the instructions. If you don't, then I'm going to litigate because there's absolutely nothing that's going to stop these instructions from getting, getting done. There's no way. I mean, there's no way. And people are like, oh, they're going to just change the, the rules on us. You know, I don't think so, man, because we're getting to a point now where we know this stuff so well that, that I, I, my own personal belief is that we're getting, as a group, we're getting to know this stuff so well and so deep and so intrinsically that if they were to try to adjust things at the level that we're understanding them, they might as well just blow the whole system up. I mean, they might as well just, just, just push the red button 
and just <laughs> blow the whole thing up from one end. I mean, I feel like that's the route they're going to go. And they're not going to do that until, I mean, it's like, it's like the, the, the floodgates have exploded. I and then feel they're, they're like just going to go like this. I feel like they're gonna they're gonna do something where this the system. I mean, even like Rome, Rome fell. They're they're gonna do something where it's gonna shift, and yeah, they're gonna they're gonna unsheath that red button and be like, okay, well, yep. this has been fun because <laughs> <laughs> because you know shifting. If they shift, let's say they shift the entire negotiable instrument system, all the all the low level worker bees, they're all gonna lose their mind. It's gonna be mass chaos through all yeah. of their banks, mass chaos through all every, it's just going to be like, I mean, it's like blowing up the system. I mean, the, yeah. the, blowing up the system would be more effective than trying to change these things like the bill of exchange act from 1882. Yeah. I mean, come on, 1882. You're really going to change that. You aren't going to change that. These are, wow. it's all the same stuff. So like you say to yourself, oh no, they're just going to change all this. Change what? They're going to remove the non-citizen right. national category. You got to think all the people who put together this system, they want a back door so they don't get stuck in the system. Exactly. You think right. these people are going to are going to turn around and weld shut the very door that they know is their own exit door? There's no effing way they're going to do that. What they're going to do is they're going to have the red button. I'm telling you, and they're only going to use that red button if it's if it's just the the walls are caving in, the zombies are coming through the walls. It's over, bro. It's yeah, over. The right. defenses are down. <laughs> I mean, when, when they're going to hit a certain point, and they're going to go like Ren and Stimpy style with the big, huge finger with the big knobby end, and they're going to go boom on the red button, <laughs> and then everything fades to black. That that's. Well, I don't know. I, I, that could be the greatest day of our life, too. I, I just don't. I don't. You know, I don't know. That could that, that could very well be because the, the thing is, is that the problem with the system is the over complexity of the system. That's really the only issue. It's so complicated that no one can figure it out. If you blow the whole thing up A to Z. It gets real simple, real fast. People are going to be giving each other. God knows what pieces of paper or bottle caps or it's like Fallout, the video game. The, the currency was oh, bottle yeah. caps. I mean, see, they, it's a they, pretty sit. You can't, you know, it's bottle. I've given you bottle caps and you give me bottle caps and there's not really any banks. And that's the end. I mean, that's a pretty simple system. I mean, that, you know, so, they, so, they so blowing it up might be the best dang thing that ever happened. You know what I mean? They enjoy too much of what in order for them to enjoy the things that they enjoy, they have to be there. So that's why I say they never get they can't get rid of if you want exactly. to call it the remedies, the freedoms, the liberties, because they're enjoying all of them. Exactly. On a daily basis, way more than we do. Mm -hmm. And if they were to try to see, remember, we're we're the ones who created the Constitution. And so with that there, there's only so much checks and balances that they can do. All right. But they'll try to hide the doors or the pathways to have access to it because they want to be the ones on top of the pyramid. They don't want us encroaching. And changing the pyramid into a, a, a rectangle or whatever it might look like, you know what I mean? Or an upside down pyramid. They don't want that change. And they like the pyramid. They're like, hey, we're up here. You guys stay down there. And now that we're starting to push into their area, they're like, um, well, we don't want to get rid of this. But how can we like, I don't know, uh, jazz it up so it doesn't look as easy to get. Like a lot of people were doing the FOIA request for the. Uh, getting back the document that said, you know, you are not a 14th Amendment U.S. citizen. You know, yeah. we started doing that long time ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I said then that it's only going to be a matter of time before they're going to start figuring out a way to, to modify it. So people are still getting the letters, but now they're saying, per your request, we cannot find the specific information on that on that information. You know, they're, they're muddying it up so yeah. that you don't have that exact worded document. But once again, we don't need that. We no, no, it's the, the core. The core aspects are not going to change the, the right. external fringe stuff. If you if you are concerned with them changing things, chances are you, you really don't have a good grasp of this information, because when you have a good grasp of this information, you realize. Negotiable instruments are two things, an unconditional promise to pay or an unconditional uh, order to pay. That's it. Yep. And, end of, and sto end of story. That's the whole story. And if you think they're ever going to change that, you are bat, S-H-I-T, insane. Because I'll tell you what, that allows them to have access to infinite credit. Right. 
And if you think that they're going to blow up their own infinite credit source, they are absolutely not going to blow up their own infinite nope. credit source. Not even close. Now, if you're going out and getting FOIAs and doing, you know, W4 sandwiches, I'm sorry, all this kind of, in my opinion, kind of like off the beaten path stuff, which is great if it works, that stuff, yeah, they can alter that. But uh, yeah. an unconditional promise to pay or an unconditional order to pay from 1882 is the Bill of Exchange Act. It ain't going anywhere, bro. No. There's, only, there's only one place that's going, the red button. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it's, either here, it's either here or Rome's on fire. There's no in-between. Yeah, that, that's literally their foundation. And so they're not going to pull the foundation, the rug out, really speaking, uh, Never. Under, from underneath themselves. They're not going to do it. Never. 1971, when they finally handled the you ever seen that website uh wtf happened in 1971 you ever see that website i don't think i've seen that one let me uh let me do a screen share you got to see this so so this is when this is the time period when they did the um when they finally released the, the gold standard like for the final final straw they did uh what uh, uh happened in 1971 so this is when they dropped the gold standard completely and this is actually uh it's wtf happened in 1971.com now this was their big plan because once they once they could get infinite credit through through infinite issuing and exchange of bills of exchange and uh and 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 uh promissory notes they yeah. they they excessively had infinite money and what does infinite money give you it gives you ultimate control and power because you can pay anybody any amount of money at any point in time to get anything you want done done so you have a, a direct uh correlation with all these different graphs at that exact same moment that they finally fully disconnected all precious metals from negotiable instruments and what happened is, is that the people that are behind the scenes, they have these plans and they have these ideas and they have these agenda 20s and agenda 30s and all this good stuff. They went crazy with all their infinite money and they started to pr progress excessively quickly on all of their goals and everything, crime rates, uh, tons and tons and tons of information, cost of living, uh, hmm. tons and tons of information on this website, inflationary graphs, everything's here. Right. And, and the thing is, is 1971 is when everything happened, 1971 and negotiable instruments, this is their control mechanism. And if anyone believes, uh, that they're going to change this mechanism, uh, to, to change this mechanism to the extent that they would need to to stop us from doing what we're doing would essentially be tantamount to just blowing it up. Right. I mean, it, it would require a complete rewriting of the entire United States Code and the entire Uniform Commercial Code. No one's going to read any of that. Their, 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 their whole system, which is based on a lot of ignorance, but people at least know some of the basics, it, the, the, everything, all the banks will be gone. Everything will be gone. If they, if they do changes, they're not going to change anything. They're just going to blow it up. They're just going to blow up everything. It's like having dynamite strapped to everything, and they're just going to push a button, and it's just going to blow up everything. And you yeah. can go down this website, and you can see a lot of information here. But this, this is proof. This website is proof. The, the negotiable instrument system being completely disconnected from any precious metals right. is, is the greatest thing that's ever happened to them. And they worked a hundred freaking years for that day to happen. This is, this is yeah. what they've always, this is their wet dream. Their wet dream is to disconnect. Their wet dream is 1971. They probably still think about it today. <laughs> Wake up a little pickly in the morning. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> So I, I don't, you know, and I think, you know what I think it is? I think there's a lot of people who are just apathetic and they want an excuse to just lay down and die. And the two excuses they love to give me the most are Nasara Jasara. Well, actually, three okay. excuses. Three excuses. Number one is Nasara Jasara. One, another one that I don't hear very much anymore uh, is uh, Donald Trump. And the third one uh, is uh, they're just going to change it all once we learn it. 
I'm not even sure. The more I hear this stuff, I'm not even sure that people believe it. I think it's just their own excuse to be yep. useless and to not move forward and to not take action. Uh, it's, a, it's a safety mechanism. It's a, it's know. like a defensive safety emotional yep. issue, and that's why they 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 have no idea what they're talking about, and they just kind of manufacture this idea, and then they go, oh thank God, yes, that's that's what's gonna. Oh yeah, oh, I feel so much better now. It's like a it's like a self coddling. It's like a sleeping pill. Uh, and they snort it. They crush it up and they snort it off a hooker's ass and they go, oh, I feel so much better now. Uh, you know, that's what I think it is because the thing is, is they're not going to change any of this. Uh, Donald Trump, in my opinion, isn't going to be the, the savior. If he, if he was going to be the savior, he would have already done it. And honestly, he had many, many years and he still could tell you all about uh, being a state citizen. He could tell you all about negotiable instruments. He could tell you about any of these things. He's had, he's had the media's ear. He's had all these different things, and he hasn't told you about any of these things. I'm not saying he's a bad guy. Don't get me wrong. I don't think he's a bad guy. I think he actually does mean well. I think he's a good guy. But I'm just saying, it ain't that hard to tell someone about state citizen versus federal citizen. It ain't that hard to tell someone that a negotiable instrument is an unconditional promise to pay or an unconditional order to pay. It ain't that hard to tell someone that a ticket is a little is a complaint it says complaint right on it it's a little tiny itty bitty micro lawsuit it's a lawsuit that the police officer is suing you for breach of contract because you've naturalized into state of california and because you naturalized into state of california by conferring the nationality of the state of california upon yourself after birth by any means whatsoever you are now privy to traffic laws and because you are naturalized into the state of california and you broke said traffic laws a ticket is a breach of contract it's a lawsuit for breach of contract it's so simple. And when you understand it in a simple way, the simple understanding is the understanding that they can never change. It's the complicated, weird understandings of things in these extremely complicated processes where there's a hundred moving parts. Well, yeah, then they can go in there and change one of those little minor moving parts and it's not a big deal. But when you're right. getting into something like a promissory note, bro, they're, they're never, it's never, it's way too simple. When, when you have a really simple understanding of these things, you know, you go into a courtroom. Okay, so apparently I have a complaint for breach of contract. Where is the contract? What 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 contract is it that that you believe that I've broken that puts me in these traffic laws? Well, you live in the state of California. No, I don't. Absolutely, positively, without question, do not. And if you believe that I do, I'll confer nationality of a state upon myself right now. I live in the state of the uh, uh, bad wolf, nation of the bad wolf. Boom. Now I'm not in state of California anymore. Now what are you going to do? Let's hear it. Nothing. You're not going to you're not going to do dick. So that's it. You know, and then you're going to now at that point the big thing that we're doing now is now you're going to file a counter complaint. It's like, "Oh no, you guys think you're going to get off the hook that fast? Dismiss the case?" <laughs> oh no. You guys are so cute. Look at you. Boop, 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 boop. You're so cute. <laughs> Counterclaim, bro. You're going to rope them down and you're going to handcuff them and twist their arm and you're going to be like, "You brought me here and now I'm not leaving." False claim. False claim, fictitious filing, fictitious name. Uh, uh, 18 USC 241, 18 USC 242. I'm walking out of there with limbs in coolers. You know what I mean? The the one thing um, you did mention on a little bit earlier that I liked and you just sparked a, a, a memory is when I was watching the news and I put this on one of my shorts um, where they were talking about Hunter Biden and they I couldn't believe they said it on TV. It's a quick blurb. And they said, oh, well, we can't do certain things to Hunter Biden because he's a private citizen. I was like, right there. I can't be I could not believe they said it on TV. You know what I mean? But they addressed it right from the White House. They said, oh, he's a private citizen. So he's not in, you know, uh, and I was like, there it is. Like, so for all those people who still don't believe. You know, this is a real thing. Like, it, this is, this is, it's real. It, you have, you were born private. Yeah. You know, you just have to know how to claim it and move that way. So when people ask me a lot about like, do they need to do all these processes and all these things? I tell them, no. Like when I first got started, you yeah, the old gurus and the old timers and whatever else. They're like, oh, you got to send this in and get rid of everything. The way I look at things now is that like, you just need to know who you are and you know how to, from here forward, how to move. 
It's good to get your passport. It's good to get certain things done. Mm -hmm. um, but sending out millions of affidavits and all that <laughs> stuff, they don't want them anyway. So it's if you want to be private, you know, convert your stuff to being owned by some private entity. That essentially that's it. You want to be private, create yourself a private name, create a private ID, you know, move from here forward. If they're not, they're, they're never going to remove your name and stuff out of the system, no matter how you tweak it with your straw man, which is still good. I'm not saying not to do it, but they're just not. They make money on your name sitting there. They're, that account is sitting there making the money. They are not going to ever get rid of it. Yeah. So what you have to do is then give the baby their bottle and create new stuff for yourself. And, and if you if you want to operate in the courts, you use that name. Right. So I don't know. I love having that name. If they came to me and said, hey, we'll take that name away right now and put it in the trash can, I'd say, oh, no, 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 no. And I I'm the holder in due course on that I, name. Sir. My little pickle here, I'd just be like, no, no, you're not taking my name, bro. Like, you know, <laughs> That's, that's why name. I made the video, and a lot of these uh, so-called gurus are all like, oh, the wolf, blah, blah, blah. I hear it all the time. But I said in the video, I said, um, do not renounce. It's a trap. I said, why do you want to yes. get rid of that? Yeah. If you fully get rid of that and you do it the proper way and it's all done and said, you know, one, they're going to try to trick you. I've had people when I first started doing this do it and they were then stateless. Now, of course, we now know that you can just create your own state and move from there. You have the right to be here as a private person. But why get rid of that tool? Because that's what it is. It's a tool. It's a shield. It's a, it might be a hammer that's kind of effed up a little bit, but you use it when you need to. But from here forward, you create your private everything, you know, whether you want to do a, your own micronation, your private trust and FBO, whatever it is you want to do, you just do it. That's all. Put your stuff in there. Like when I got my, my most recent uh, vehicle, my name never hit the paper. It was all done in the name of my trust. Mm. I told them uh, I want my the car titled right in the trust. Never touch anything. I said, um, I'm I'm the uh, you know the uh, trustee and the grant and the trustor for this. I want it titled right in there. I'm gonna pay for it. Boom, here you go, and there. And since then, I've been telling people like you know on the private side in consultations, you can have your straw man, the credit from the straw man until you build something up with credit, purchase it, create the agreement, and then move it into the private. Mm -hmm. You're transferring it right into the private because there's a lot of things that a lot of contracts that have. Uh, you know, uh, do upon sale. So if you're selling it, you have to then pay them out, but you're transferring, you have the right to transfer it into the private. So you just make everything private. That's all you, all you, all you gotta do. Yeah. And on your same point of, uh, of, of showing people, uh, one of the, uh, I'll do a screen share again, real quick. If you will prove it. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, one of the, one of the easiest ways now, nowadays that I show people how real this is, and it gets them from, from zero to a hundred miles an hour real fast is 18 USC 1401 and 18, yep. uh, and eight USC, uh, 1408, eight mm -hmm. USC 1408. This is like about as black and white as it gets. There's really no way to defend against this. You have, uh, eight USC 1401 nationals and citizens of the United States at birth. And it says here, the following shall be nationals and citizens of the United States at birth. And then it has uh, these different points. And then this is the opposite nationals, but not citizens of the United States at birth. Right. Uh -huh. And if you look at if you look at a lot of this comes from the I-9, if you go to the I-9 form and you go to the instructions where it talks about the non-citizen national of the United States, non-citizen. It says here, an individual born in American Samoa, certain former citizens of the former trust territory of the Pacific Islands, and certain children of non-citizen nationals born abroad. There That's it is. what they're referring to in 18, 8 U.S.C. Uh, uh, 1408. They're referring to these particular points. And if you look at these points... Um, Pretty much every single person, if you were born in one of the 50 states, you you match one of these points. But then yep. what happened was, is you, you were 16 and you conferred nationality of the state called the United States upon yourself after birth by any means whatsoever, filling out a W-9 tax form or getting a driver's license. And that's when you became a citizen. You weren't a citizen until you filled out those documents. You were a national, but not a citizen of the United States from Thanks, birth. Yep. Yep.
that's it. So it's a fascinating, it's a fascinating thing. And, 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 and 8 U.S.C. 1408 is so crystal clear. I mean, what's cool, too, is if you show someone 8 U.S.C. 1408 and they start making excuses, you know, at that point, it's an emotional defense mechanism. Right. There ain't nothing. Yep. There ain't nothing you're going to say. It's going to make any difference. You might as well just pack it up and go home. And it's beautiful because it's just like, boom, you show them that they freak out. You say, have a good life and you dip. And what's funny is a lot of times when you say have a good life and you dip, they go, oh, no, 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 blah, blah, blah. and then all of a sudden you, you can break that defensive mechanism by just doing an about face and bolting out of there. That's the only way you're ever going to get to these people. But but what's funny is it's very toxic. If you get into a conversation like this and you start to hit them with these things and and they just they're just doing their, you know, mental gyrations and everything else, you're not dealing with a thinking mind. You're dealing with an emotional defense mechanism and you're going yes. to lose you're going to lose and the more time you invest the more you're going to lose and that's what people don't get it you know it's really sad because because people want to help and they want to help their friends and family and they wind up on the ground crying shaking and sweating and dying because they're <laughs> they're trying to shift the mind of this individual and it's never going to happen because you're not talking to the individual you're talking to an, an emotional defense mechanism that's the issue and it's so sad because you really want to help this person. And it's a beautiful thing. And it gets twisted. You know what I mean? So this is one of the spots I like to um, use to, to get people to wake up, like the, the beginning breadcrumb. So here, this is just the Styles Manual, uh, GPL Styles Manual 2016. And in the little uh, search window, I'm going to type in the word Texan. Okay, just because it's shorter. Texan. And it takes us down to nationalities, section 5.22 and 5.23. And it says here, now, first of all, if you look at the word nationalities, which is plural for the word national, then you, you break that down. It has the word nation in it. Mm -hmm. Then it has the word nati, which is for native, okay? Natural, natural and native. So it says here, in designating the what? Natives of the states. And it's really sad. It's, it's very confusing because if you look at 8 U.S.C. 1101 subsection A21, the definition of the word national, uh, the word state is not capitalized. And it's funny because from my own experiences, diving deep into this, capital S for states is referring to the corporate versions of those states. So actually, this is actually incorrect. 5.23 should say in designating the natives of the states with lowercase s on the cap on the states. So here's what I found out about that. OK. And, you know, I, I'm not saying this is verbatim. This is but in reading actually this manual. OK. Um, it actually when I looked up their uh, definition of capitalization and the rules, it states that the it says Due to antiquity, there are some interpretations, local customs, and et cetera, when it comes to the capitalization. This is what they said, okay? Of this specific word? What's that? Uh, you talking about capitalization in general or capitalization of the word state specifically? Uh, in general, capitalization in general. Oh, wow. Okay, okay. And so it says that um, some of the local customs may not apply because essentially they're, they're, what they're trying to do is they kind of give them, themselves a way out. Mm, and yeah. saying that, yeah, we might go upper, lower, upper and lower. We're not into that thing. So in reading this and then making a couple of phone calls now, and I could be wrong, but this is what they told me, is that the federal government is not operating under the jurisdiction of the UCC. They said from the federal level up, they're not operating under, under the UCC, but the states are and the states do go by the UCC and they do understand that that is a commercial format where they pay attention to it but the federal government saying that they they don't uh, they don't work that way that's I don't what, think I don't think that I don't think that's true whoever you spoke to because every time I'm doing a lawsuit and I'm filing a lawsuit on negotiable instruments it's always at the federal level they won't even take it at the state level because because negotiable instruments being accepted as legal tender it's not a state that's not a state situation yeah it's not state of california it, is accepts legal tender of negotiable instruments and state of utah doesn't it's 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 a it's a federal mandate so i don't know i i don't know I, who you spoke to but i i, I actually I think, don't think that's true i don't think that's true at it, all 
I think what their interpretation of the person who told me, and obviously I don't make it verbatim what I hear from anybody until I do my own thing. I think what they're trying to say is the federal government itself is not operating under the UCC, but that they enforce the U the UCC. They probably so have saying, a lot of a lot of their own statutes and things like, for example, H and USC eight obligations and other securities of the United States. I mean, it's pretty simple and pretty clear that it's a federal mandate about what is legal tender, what is not. You have 12 USC 411. Uh, I've seen I've seen literal Federal Reserve documents on the Federal Reserve website. You can probably type it in and look for it for a while that will say in black and white, they're saying that lawful money has never been fully defined by the U.S. government. They say that in their own in their own circulars, right? Which is totally insane and not true. Yes, the corporation has never defined lawful money, but lawful money was defined a long time ago. It's gold and right. silver coins, Article 1, Section 10 of the Constitution. But the thing is, is that is that they they the the the, the situation is they can say we don't follow the UCC by taking all of the UCC points, creating their own statutes, and not saying that it's officially the UCC has been adopted by the federal government. Do you see? Right. So it's like yeah, yeah. they haven't really officially adopted the UCC, but then you go into the you go into the United States Code and you can find bits and pieces of all UCC one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine all over the place. Exactly. You piece it all together, and it is the UCC. Like you and me know exactly what they're doing. They're playing the gray area, but see, because it's not clearly defined, then that, my friend, is also then where you can use it against them because everything that yep. they do has to be clearly defined. And if exactly. it's not, you can bang them with it. So that's why I tell people, no exactly. matter which way they run, if you know how to interpret the evidence or information that they're giving you, you can always use it against them. If they have it defined, it wasn't defined clear enough. If they don't have it defined, it wasn't defined clear enough for, for it to be used. So you can't go after me for those things because you don't have a clear definition of it. And that's the beauty of, of the whole thing is the whole thing is not only do they not have clear definitions, is they don't want to define. Exactly. If you bring up if you bring up the fact that the word state is capitalized everywhere except 8 USC 1101 subsection A21 and certain areas of Title VIII, when they're referring to the possibility that could be domestic or foreign nations, they don't they don't capitalize the word state. Well, why is that? Everywhere else, you guys capitalize it. If you click on the word state, even the lowercase version of the word state, it goes to the capital definition. Lowercase yeah. the lowercase s in state is very very clearly used yep. in specific circumstances in Title VIII but it is completely undefined. It was a huge red flag for me. Yeah. And yeah. it was on purpose. It's done that way on purpose. It's so amazing because they're actually very, very clear and very, very open about a lot of things. The only area that they really try to hide is the definition of the term United States and the capital S state versus the lowercase s state. Yep. Those are the ones that they just, you can tell, they're just like, we are burying <laughs> these fuckers. And that's the end of the story. But everything else, I've never seen them try to hide anything else. I mean, really, almost nothing. Those are the only things I've ever I've ever been like, wow, they are like really not wanting to talk about this. Uh, so, yeah, it's... it's uh, they they we, we know what they're doing. We know exactly why they're doing it. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Um, I've, I've had some victories in multiple states because um, a lot of them by their own code do not have, and this is a, a, a gem drop here for those people who don't know, they don't have a clear definition of the word, of the base word drive. Now we know it's in, and, and this is on the states themselves websites. If they don't have it on there, I mean, how are you going to, uh, you know, uh, go after me for said things in concerns to the word drive or driver and you don't have a clear definition of it, my friend? Mm -hmm. And also most of the states just the states are all just sub corporations of the United States. I mean, really, exactly. Yep. The state codes are just federal codes that like in California, they're lazy. Like they almost almost nothing in California code is any different than federal code. Uh, yeah, I've seen yeah, some yeah. states where they, they do a teeny tiny little itty bitty and it, it almost seems like they did it just to say that it's a little different. Oh, no, no, it's not federal. You know, it's, it's almost like they just do it because, oh, no, no, you know, it's not federal. Like that's like the only reason why they did it. They're like, we well, just change this one word here, change one word here. And like, boom, now we got state code. And like now it's like totally different, totally not federal anymore. You know, uh, 
I think Idaho is the only one I've ever seen that was like chaos. I was like, what the heck? Uh, but but almost anything else, it's it's pretty much the same as the federal, honestly. The only one I've ever seen, well, uh, let me take that back. That's the UCC I was thinking of. Never mind. I was going to say is I think Louisiana, they, they're UCC because they deal with like Napoleonic law and they have their own adopted version similar to the UCC, but it's not the UCC. Mm. It's, it's, I think Montana the, is like that, too. Okay. I was going to say, I, I heard there was another another place. Um, I know it's like one other state. I think it could be Montana, but... At the end of the day, it doesn't matter because they they want they want it's called. I mean, come on, I'm not even trying to hide it. It's called the Uniform Commercial Code. Like it's not called the you know. The whole point of the UCC is to be uniform. They want the infinite money. They want that UCC three to work everywhere. Yeah. They they want those negotiable instruments to work everywhere. Because that is their bread and butter. That is their infinite money machine. And if anybody believes that they're going to get rid of UCC3 or not have UCC3 or pretend as though they don't have UCC3 or if they don't have UCC3, they're not going to use some other statement that's exactly the same as UCC3. It's just not called UCC3. If you believe in any country, I'm starting to get to the point now where in any country, if you believe that they don't have that, they wouldn't want that, or they're just going to change the rules you got an emotional issue and you need to look, you need to get away from the books and you need to go look in a mirror and go for a walk. Cause it's, it's got nothing to do with the UCC. It's got to do with you. It's a little bit harsh, but Keep that's pretty real. much, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at with this. Uh, UCC three. If you find some place that it ain't there, it'll be there real soon. Or they just don't care. Cause it's some small insignificant situation that they, there's, you know, like Montana, where the population of Montana is extremely low. It's like, they yeah. don't care. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you think anyone's going to come along and try, you, you want to know the fastest way to get a bullet in the back of your head when you're walking down the street? Try to remove UCC3 from California law. You and your whole family will be dead in less than 24 hours. Guaranteed. Yeah, you're not you're not playing with with their with their bread and butter. They'll wipe out your bloodline. They'll murder everything that you've ever. They'll they'll murder your cat in front of you, and then kill you, and then hang you off your balcony. There's no way. There's no way UCC three is ever going anywhere. Yeah, they're not they're not getting rid of their foundation. That's that's all they have. That's 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 literally their everything, and they're all. Yep, and the only way UCC three is going anywhere is the big red button. <laughs> That's the only way UCC three is going absolutely anywhere, or even being adjusted. You guys think it's going to be adjusted? Oh no, it ain't going to be adjusted at all. It's just this, or what we got now. And and I wonder who who would be the person to touch that button or persons. That that's the room I I wouldn't mind um, peeping in on. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have the the big, huge international bank that produces the UCC. You know, the UCC is a copyrighted piece of 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 of, of you know it's it's copyrighted. Who owns the UCC? It's like some it's like some Swedish bank that made it. Who yeah. who wrote the UCC? The Let's see here. I remember seeing it one time. It was like the Uniform Commercial Code. Um, I'm looking at it here. History. National Conference of Commissioners on Uniform State Laws in 1945. Could have sworn it was from a um, might take me a minute to find this, but uh, it's not an American thing. No, they there was Americans a part of it when they adopted it, but yeah, it's not an American thing. Most of that stuff isn't. If you look up, even the Black Laws Dictionary is not American. Yeah. I can't find it super fast, but anyways, uh, if you do that little history search on on where the UCC comes from, it's uh, 
And then you'll say to yourself, it'll say on there, oh, UCC is only American. Well, yeah, but it's the same thing everywhere else. They just call it something different. It's right. the same thing. It's the same. It's the same playbook. It really is. If you think there's not negotiable instruments in other countries, you're, you know. Oh, they do it around the world. I mean, I get people from all over and they tell me it's the same thing. It's just a different name. So it's the same game they're playing everywhere. It's just they call it something different so that it uh, suits the, the local people, you know, yep. but it's the same game. It's literally they're converting nations and land into corporations, people into corporate legal persons um, all across the whole thing. That, that it's That's the game. That is, and that the is beauty it. of that is we don't need to learn you know i was scared at first i was like my god if it's this complicated in america i can't imagine starting over from zero and having to learn india for example right but it, it actually is a huge alleviation in my opinion to learn that it is the same game everywhere that's a really that's a really beautiful thing i mean it's actually really uh, relieving to hear that uh because i was learning that too as the years progress and it's like wow Thank God, because it's like, what is it going to take me four years per per country to learn, you know, how to work all this, you know? And and the answer is no, you learn one and you got them all. It's like yeah. Pokemon, man. You, you you catch them all here and you got them all everywhere. You know what I mean? That's it. Once you once you know the core of the game, it's the, it, the names of the pieces. Say if you change around all the names of the pieces on the chessboard, it's still the same thing. You still know the moves. Yep. You still know what which ones do what. All you have to do is just call it a new whatever the local language is on, on the king or queen or, you know, pawn or rook or whatever. It's same game. That's it. You look in the definition section and, and if you know how the game is played here, or you go someplace else, you look at the definition section and you'll be able to piece it together like that. Oh, let's see who is that. Ah, see, Mr. A6 is out there. He said he wants to talk about gold, gold backs. Hey, I got some right here. Check it out. <laughs> Six, you trying to jump in? I sent you a, a link. Jump in if you want to get in. Check it out. I got. I just bought some myself. Oh, nice. Yeah, I've been seeing those pop up a lot more lately. Yes, yes. Yeah, there, I mean, yeah. whatever. I, I, I have tons of silver coins and all sorts of things all over the place, and I just, uh, and I, and I subscribe to a lot of Instagram, like H A Auctions, I believe it's called H A Auction, which is a sweet Instagram, by the way. It's an auction where they buy and sell really unique currencies. They have like old territorial currencies. They've got huh. all sorts of craziness and they've got ratings and they go on there and they talk about the currencies and they talk about the history of silver certificates and gold certificates. And I think it's called, uh, I think it's called H a auction and it's literally an auction. It's just an, it's like just, it's not even anything that we do. It's just a, they just collect and sell. Uh, currency is H A currency, H A currency, um, heritage auctions currency, and um, they got colonial currency and 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 just all sorts of really wild stuff, and uh, it's all paper currency. And I recommend that everyone subscribe to this particular Instagram because it's it's cool to see all these different. So many, I never even, I mean, dude, way beyond anything I've heard anybody talk about. So many different types of currencies and, and fascinating things. And um, it's a good, it's a good study. I mean, I have like all sorts of different things and a $2 bill here and gold pieces and all this craziness. Cause I, I, I feel like I'm, I want to, I want to know, you know what I mean? Like I want to know and I want to see all of it and I want to see all the different variations over the years. And it's all yeah. about it's all about immersion, you know. It's like an immersion, immersion knowledge. You know, you immerse yourself in currency and paper currency and structure and negotiable instruments and all this kind of thing. And um, if you really want to learn it, that's that's how you learn it. You immerse yourself in it, you know. So, um, but yeah, goldbacks are cool. I think they're cool. I think they are very smart. I like their marketing a lot. Yeah, they've actually um, they've actually partnered with Tuttle Twins and they partnered with. Um, well, just Tuttle Twins, really, which I think Tuttle Twins is absolutely brilliant. They do uh, children's books, but they're like highly intelligent children's books that talk about like actually important things. And they even mm -hmm. have like cartoons and stuff now and like little TV shows about, you know, democracy versus republic and all this. It's actually really cool. It's not like what we teach. It's not like on that level. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But it's like one big step down from there, but like one big step up from like mainstream, right? 
Yeah. And and they mean well, and they really do care a lot, and and it's cool. I like, you know, you can tell, you can tell. Like, are they just effing around, or are they that do they really mean, you know, what they're doing? And subtle twins and and gold backs and stuff like that. They really, they really mean what they're doing. They're very serious. I mean, if we want to go purist, you know, we're gonna go gold silver coins, uh, like some Zelda <laughs> type stuff, you know, with little baggies. Uh, if we want to go all the way, I mean, that's, that's what we're going to have. Um, you know, which I'm totally fine with that. Uh, so it just depends on, on what people want to do. Um, I'm fine with either way. I mean, you know, you can walk around with a bunch of teeny tiny little one gram silver coins and you can buy practically anything because the, the buying power is so high. So, you know, it doesn't really... You know, you, you buy a, a whole house with, you know, a small, very heavy pouch filled with large silver coins. But, you are you know, the buying power is so big that you just have a pouch this big filled with silver coins. And it's like, you know, you just kind of hand it over like that. You know, it's kind of like the old, the old leprechauns and stuff, you know. It's yeah. kind of like, so, you know. Well, um, I figure we'll probably run another, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Uh, we're almost at two hours. So if you, Brandon, if you want to like field some questions in the comments section, I think sure, Mike sure, yeah. Mattel wants to say something, make sure that, um, you know, well, I guess we can, when we finish up, you can let everybody know where you're at, where they can get a hold of you, find out more information. Sure, sure, sure. Yada, yada, yada. So yeah, feel free to either uh, field any of the questions and then we'll kind of move around from there. Uh, I think on my end, the questions and answers is, is disabled. I'm on the stream yard. Oh, that's it was coming up like a whole lot and it was like crazy. And then I think you turned it off because it like closed down. Oh, I might have hit something to turn probably from distracting people. I don't know why it's it was um, very distracting. That's why I think <laughs> you, you were sitting there and you were you like leaned forward and click something. And I was like kind of like relieved. I was like, oh, good, because <laughs> it was just yeah. like going crazy. It was like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right here um or you can just tell me and i'll and i can answer or you can answer or whatever i mean yeah let's see here um mikhail did you want to throw in a question right away and then i'll, I'll see if i can so, find I, so yeah i i took some notes regarding like like you said the the ssn so did you so did you remove or you know re release your ssn only for the flesh entity or all the trust individually did you like how did you do that but that was the, the SSN is only attached to the ENS Legis. It always has been and it always will be. So okay. I tell I people, that. I, this guy, mm -hmm. point at myself, I don't have an SSN. And I just put my hands up. You right. don't have an SSN? No. How? How is that possible? I was, no, born, I was born in a barn. Really? Born in a barn and I just never got one. And are you going to get benefits when you get older? I'm like, well, I'll tell you what, you're paying into that thing your whole life. And then what? You get scraps from the government. That $600 paycheck that you're going to get from SS from SS services when you're 65 isn't going to be worth an effing thing. I mean, why do you? You're right. You're right. I got inflation so bad. I mean, why would you even want that? By that point, they're like, dude, I want to get rid of my SS. How do I do it? So for me, it's it's really easy. And again, kind of like what, what uh, James was talking about, you know, at the end of the day, Bro, charisma is 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 always going to be senior to any paperwork or any 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 laws or any USC or anything. You got charisma, you can do anything. You can walk through. You can through. still access your TDA though, and, and like all your ass, uh, assets and whatnot. Like like because to create the TDA account, you got to give your your corporation information. So the TDA That's account true. requires you to sign under penalty of perjury that you are a U.S. person. So the way I signed mine was without prejudice by. Williams, comma, Brandon, Joe, comma, agent for Brandon, Joe Williams, comma, principal in all caps. They flagged the account, locked the account, made me notarize a document. I notarized the document, the authorization document, in the exact same way, mailed it in. Five months later, I get an email saying that, you know, we have the right to, you know, not open up an account if we feel that the account are being open for any weird, nefarious reasons. It appears as though you're trying to open the account for weird and nefarious reasons, so we're not going to open up your account. Now, the thing is, though, is that I've looked into this a little bit. I haven't done anything with TSA accounts, nor do I even care to. It's, it's, it's not required at all to do anything with remittance to have a TDA account at all. I don't, I could care less about a TDA account. What people don't realize is that the electronic online TDA account is actually considered a convenience account. You don't need any approval from the Treasury to mail hard copy paperwork to the Treasury to get any sort of TDA related services done via snail mail. 
the TDA, the TDA is actually, there's two different versions of the TDA. There's the normal one, which you have, whether you signed up or not, it doesn't matter. And then they have the electronic one. The electronic one is the only one they can, they can deny access to. So I don't really care. I mean, I'll just mail, I'll just mail them some stuff in a registered uh, parcel and they have to do it. And if they don't, I'm going to litigate. So I don't really care much about the TDA. They didn't give me the TDA and I don't really care much to pursue it right now, to be honest with you. What's going on, A6, young cousin? Uh, introduce yourself and uh, welcome to the uh, platform. We've got about 15, 20 minutes, then we're going to shut her down, but jump in, tell everybody who you are and say what's up to the guests and uh, just jump on in. The water's fine. Word. Yeah, I've been watching y'all for like the last 45 minutes. My man Brandon is cooking over here, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> he got Thank the you. crystal, man. He out here cooking. Yo, A6 grind time. You already know who I am, man. The foreign national born natural. You know what I'm saying? Um, I haven't been live in like the last couple of weeks. I took the last two weeks off. This channel banned me something crazy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, as somebody who got their channel uh, taken down and boarded up when I went to get in it when I first started doing this, that's why I be real easy. I put it out dude. there, but uh, make sure you education. <laughs> Man, they they I I got to a point now where I literally don't even talk about like stuff like this that much because it got so bad. They started pulling videos down too. Mm. Like I got like two notifications in the last three weeks that they pulled two videos down, and these are videos I did like two years ago. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So they and and the videos are disappearing. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah man but yeah you know what i'm saying um uh, as far as the negotiable instruments and things of that nature what i tell people all the time is um is one of those things where even if you have the codes and stuff like that on point you might have to hold these people's feet to the fire because there's so many people that tell them they're going to pursue litigation and don't actually do it you know what i'm saying so if they don't endorse yeah. an instrument or something or if they don't uh properly apply an instrument to an account and they just keep it and act like you didn't send it and still send you a bill um you know you might have to actually take them to task yeah, so it's yeah. not as simple as just sending them an instrument you know what i'm saying yeah yeah so yeah that's one of those things where you know you really have to follow through it's the same thing with any of these processes even when you exercise and your right to travel and these people are violating your rights you know taking your stuff um you know, you 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 really have to play defense, you know, get the case dismissed or no prost in some cases. And then you got to go after them in a higher court. You know what I'm saying? It's all really about standing on your rights. Sorry to interrupt. Hello. How are you? Uh, should I still follow Sorry. the administrative process? Because this because with the new corporation that it was sold to, this is the first time first communication that I sent to them. I sent a notice of tender of payment acceptance and the power of attorney granting them the right to transfer the principal uh, balance to the account, principal account for the principal name. From what I'm hearing, you guys, I'm all new to this. So this is like all information overload so i sent them that and then they sent um a letter saying thank you for you for bringing this to our attention we take this matter seriously we'll respond back by march 7th then they said our record indicate that such as such association is the current owner of the load as requested but that's not what i requested i requested them to to access the funds and discharge the 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 the, the lien you know so, and then the a, a, another communication that came today actually shows that an individual by them is a dedicated loan specialist, and her job is to help you fall behind. Fall, um, to help if you fall behind on the mortgage payment. So, is this like a distraction? Uh, should I go directly to the litigation, or should I send them a note or a communication, or you know, opportunity to cure or whatnot uh, with more laws uh, before I do that? Or what? What is the next move? What is? I hate to ask that question because every matter is situation. What is my what most is people story? say you're supposed to send in three times, the first time, the second time, the third time, blah, 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 all this stuff. And it all comes from UCC three. You can do that. I don't do that. I don't see there's any point in that. You you you've decided on a process you want to use. You've issued your orders. They have openly defied legal lawful orders. That's the end. There is no Second time, third time, 10th time, 20th time, change the process, jump over here, 
Uh, I'm not going to put on a wizard outfit and pull out my Ouija board trying to, you know, pour out some kind of powder, trying to, mm. you know, uh, say some kind of incantation, hoping that, you know, the poltergeists of, of my ancestry will, will fly into the payment officer's uh, bedroom window at night and whisper in their ear they should process the documents of Brandon J. Williams. I'm going to go to litigation. That's where I'm going to go. Now, yeah. just so you guys know, by the end of this year, I plan on developing an entire, uh, just like my free contract killer course, I'm going to make a whole new course, which will be free, and it's going to be the pro se litigant course. And I'm going to be explaining mindset, how to write a complaint, how to structure a complaint, how to move the court into discovery, how to bang on someone in discovery, and then how to close out and win the case, and then how to get the payment or orders or get, you know, get the compel the court to order the defendant to follow the orders of which you have originally all you're doing in a court room all you're doing in litigation is you're saying this is how it works you've decided on a process you write up the orders you're not a dick or an asshole or in some way doing something to where no one want to listen to you that's not going to be good because no one's going to listen to you just real simple orders you've sent in your orders now they've defied your orders okay no problem now we're going to go into litigation now, in litigation, all you're, all you're saying in litigation is, I, I issued these orders. I got some kind of really illogical response or, or, or defiance against my orders. They're lawful orders. They will, get, they will get completed. And I'm asking the court for assistance and enforcement to get my lawful orders completed. And all you're doing is just either getting them to look at the orders, getting them to understand the orders, or reissuing the orders. That's all you're doing during litigation. You're just bringing up the orders again and again and again and again. I want these orders completed. I want these orders completed. I want these orders completed. What don't you understand about my orders? Well, I can clarify that with you. Okay, now that that's clarified, I want my orders completed. I want my orders completed. I want my orders completed. That's all litigation is. That's all you're doing. You just got yeah, I think he was talking about the administrative process. In terms of uh, sending something three times and then doing uh, notice, notice what is it? A notice of default and opportunity to cure. Yeah. And then I'm trying to get a default judgment for non-response. I think that's what he was talking about. But yeah, like I said, you know, there's not there's more than one way to skin a cat with this type of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Hey, uh, yeah. Mikael, um, do you want to share? You don't have to because obviously this is a public platform, so you might get emails forever. But if you want to share your email, a um, couple people in the chat want to try to reach out to you to help you or you can just send me your email me again there's a couple people um who want to link up with you so if you don't want to share it here now email me after this and then um uh the people who want to get in touch with you to help you with their process things they know how to do which it's all everything here is educational nobody's responsible for anything for the whole show uh these are just opinions um then hit me up and i'll link you guys together so absolutely yes thank you i'm just looking for guidance i'm all new to this i'm trying to understand it all but like the the language barrier from me being foreign and then the the fear of it the being alone because none of my family members believe in this it's like oh you're just crazy like, i'm like bro, this, <laughs> yeah. this is the source the way a path you know you just have to I have to learn it and i'm all alone in it so that's why i, I try to reach out and perhaps i overstand or i uh, overcross some boundaries like asking for too much information i know you guys have certain uh if you uh, want to have success, if you want to have success with negotiable instruments, you really should take the time. And, and the definition of take the time means probably take little bits and pieces and, and chew on it for a while because, you know, reading the whole thing is just going to probably annihilate you. Annihilated me. I had to do little sections at a time over the course of like three months. You should read UCC Article 3 in its entirety. Slowly. Don't try to eat the Burn whole thing because it. it'll eat you if you try to eat the whole thing in one <laughs> bite it'll eat you okay yeah. so but but ucc3 truly i'm not kidding if you if you go through that slowly and look up every definition of every word and just if you get overloaded just just take a break and come back in a week but just make sure you're very careful every single word it's not very big ucc3 is not really all that big right. and if you take the time and you really really read ucc3 you will run absolute circles around all the lawyers, everybody. I mean, UCC3 is so crystal freaking clear. It's unbelievable. Like, for example, I think it's uh, uh, 3-114. Uh, th uh, UCC 3-114 is just so clear. It's called, it's called contrary terms 
of instrument. It says right here, literally in black and white, if an instrument contains contradictory terms, typewritten terms prevail over printed terms, handwritten terms prevail over both, and words oh. prevail over numbers. So when they call you and they say, oh, you can't just hand write with a pen on the face of the instrument, <laughs> not only will I, but it's going to win over your, you in court all day long. <laughs> I'll write all over it, man. Give me a pen. I don't need nothing, bro. Give me a pen. You don't need a stamp. A lot of people are like, oh, you need a stamp. They're all freaking out about stamps. The stamps, which come from, uh, I forget, I think it's like uh, 42 USC 328.5 and 0.6. I'll talk about a stamp. And they say the stamp has to have these certain dimensions. It says right in that same section, when issued by banks, it needs to have the stamp. UCC3 is more generic than what are banks doing. The, the 328.5 and 328.6 CFR, that they're talking about what bank, it's actual bank terminology, right? UCC3-114 is just generic. They're just like, if you have an instrument, and you hand write on it at all, anything you want. You could draw, you could draw little drawings of little ducks and also you could do anything you want. Whatever you put on the face of that instrument, words prevail over numbers and handwritten prevails over everything. So it's like when you start reading UCC3, it's like, oh my God. It's like, that's just one little piece, one little thing I just gave you. When you read UCC3, now take what I just told you and times it by like 200. And that's where you wind up on the other side of UCC, UCC3. And what's funny is I write letters just literally copying, pasting out of UCC3 to lawyers. And they think they, they've called it word salad. They've called me <laughs> all these. They, they just, they, they literally, it's like, even if they wanted to learn UCC3, it would take them more than the month they have to respond to your complaint to learn UCC3. And their own defensive mechanisms are so bad with all these lawyers that they would never allow themselves to ever learn UCC3. So when you really learn UCC3, you just run in and you just rush all these people. And they just, I'm telling you, they just don't stand a effing chance. They just don't. They just don't. When you, I mean, read, when you read and learn, they're, remember, these books, these codes are their backbone. Yeah. Okay. And mm -hmm. they can't just jump up and change them overnight. Like it has to go through a whole big process to change anything. So when you learn to speak their language, even if you can catch them one piece, one of them by the tail, they're screwed because and they don't even know their own language. Right. Yeah. And that's the thing too. <laughs> is they might challenge you on something. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, really? That's why it says here, uh, yep. subsection this of this and this, and you got them all day. They, they don't, I'm telling you, they don't have a clue. A lot of them don't even know the Constitution, surprisingly. A lot of you know them don't saying? even know. The, the funniest thing, and you want to really put these guys on their back on their back foot, especially lawyers, and you want to just right out the gate, like, it's not even a hello. You just want to give them, like, the biggest haymaker of their life. You ask them, hey, I'm curious, is a Federal Reserve note a negotiable instrument? <laughs> <laughs> That's like hitting them with a with a crowbar. It's like half life too. It's like hitting them with a freaking crowbar right across their skull. Because they I mean, think that they, they they they're just so cuz they they're they're faced with this question where where the, the the question is so funny because if they they start thinking about it and they go to themselves, they think in their head, let's say you go to a securities attorney and you say is a Federal Reserve note a negotiable instrument? It, it, they, they suddenly realize when they're processing that question that they don't know. And then they suddenly realize that if they let you know they don't know, they look like the biggest fool and idiot on the entire <laughs> face of the entire planet ever since the dawn of all mankind. And so what they do is they just, they just short circuit and they just freak out. And it's absolutely hilarious. It's the fun. It's like getting it's like getting bit by a black mamba steak, and their their nervous system's going. This is what they do. This, ha, 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 ha. Like that that's basically the reaction that you get, and it's just it's the most amazing reaction because you take someone who's a professional securities attorney of twenty years, you ask them one question, and it's like they just hit the ground, and yeah. it's it's hilarious. It's unbelievable, and it's just because I read UCC three. That's it. That's all I did. Yeah. Yep. I personally like uh, Trinzi versus Pagliaro. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to attorneys, you know, <laughs> as What's he was saying, you know, 
Well, it's a, it basically says it's hearsay. You know, as the attorney can't enter anything on the record because uh, they weren't there for the particular situation. So if there is a situation where, let's say, you owe Bank of Shyster or something like that, <laughs> you know, uh, to, for, in a, for informational purposes and educational purposes only, by the way. Yes. But let's say if that's the case and um, you do an instrument and there's, they hire an attorney because, you know, they, they can't come after you by themselves. They have to basically hire an attorney to do so. And they come after you. You had no correspondence directly with that attorney. He did not receive the instrument. So basically, that is a third party handling the situation, which he has no standing and can't really comment on it. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times they throw these attorneys out there in a win with these uh, court cases, and they don't even give them the full information. They might sell them the information to collect the debt, because a lot of times the attorneys are just debt collectors for the most part for the firm. Um, they'll buy the debt or whatever, or they'll buy the information for like ten dollars and they'll come after you for like a thousand or something like or however much they say, quote unquote, you owe. But they had no correspondence <laughs> back and forth with you previous to them telling you there's gonna be a legal action. So they had no leg to stand on. So Trinzi versus Pagliero shuts them down. They hate it. <laughs> they completely hate it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's gorgeous. You know, yeah. it, it's it's literally been t- times where, you know, I've said it, and then this, the attorney just sits there and puts his head down. <laughs> the judge, the judge has to, you know, what I mean? to submit. In, uh, only the witness is supposed to be able to submit uh, information too, not mm-hmm. them. So yep. that's and then another, on top that's of that too, on top of that, the bank that. is not actually in the court, so the that's bank is a failure that. to appear. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's a good point. It's so yeah. many facts. Yeah. Facts. <laughs> so many holes, and if you just know what to look for, man, there's so many ways to yank the rug from underneath them. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. so, so yeah, question. So, because, sorry to interrupt, by the way. Uh, so, because the first mortgage company sold it to the collective mortgage company, is this new contract void by? I, I don't know. I've heard a lot of this kind of stuff. I don't really care. The bottom line is that you know the the reason why the first contract even existed in the first place is because you put a blank endorsement on the original promissory note rather than a special endorsement. In so the a blank one you sign in the in the like closing section, or like closing on date? the signature line. Signature and endorsement mean the same thing. You so aren't actually signing anything. You're actually endorsing you a though. financial instrument. Well, anything. I mean. If you close on a mortgage, they're going to have you sign, what, 10, 12, 15 times. Those are all endorsements. Everything's an endorsement, okay? So when you endorse with a blank endorsement, which means the endorsement does not state a payee, which comes right out of UCC3, uh, what happens is you're releasing that promissory note with no conditions attached, payable to the bearer. So it's like writing a blank check. And then what happens is the banking institution, what they do is they take that that blank endorsed instrument and then they place what's called a special endorsement on that instrument and then as per uh, uh 12 usc 412 uh application for notes they go to the federal reserve and they swap that special endorsed instrument for federal reserve notes and then they hand you back your own money and then they call it a loan and that's how quote money is created now you can put a special endorsement on the original promissory note yourself. You don't need a stamp because a stamp is only required for when, present, when presented by banks. UCC 3-114 says that you can hand write on the instrument. You can hand write the special endorsement. And when you hand write the special endorsement and you give it to the, uh, the credit bureau or the, or the banking institution or the car lot or whatever it is, they're gonna freak out. They're going to say we can't process the way it is, and they're going to kick you off the property. Again, it comes down to litigation because the thing is, is that what is the definition of acceptance? Acceptance by delivery. If you've delivered that promissory mm-hmm. note, meaning handed it to them, and they physically took the definition of tender is an unconditional offer. So, 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 so people say tender, tender, tender. So if I have the promissory note here and it's on, it's on a special endorsement and I go like this and there's no condition attached, I'm actually tendering. And then when they reach out and grab it, that's now delivery. So once you have delivered it by definition, 
delivery and acceptance are the same definition. So once you have delivered it, you can just walk out because the thing is, is that they don't have a choice. And that's where litigation comes in. Once they've received that special endorsed instrument and they freak out and they refuse to process it, or if they don't even notice that you gave a special endorsement, which is often what happens, <laughs> they'll yep. give you the car. And then a month later, you'll get a call from the financial institution stating that there's something wrong with your the way that you signed your documents. And we would yep. like you to come in come and resign in. the documents. <laughs> resign it. I happen to a friend of mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he you say, come back in. You say, oh, no, there's absolutely nothing wrong with my documents. And I mean, technically, this could possibly, I mean, I'm a bit emotionally unstable. This could be considered harassment. Not sure. So why don't you write me something? Write me a letter. Tell me exactly what the problem is, blah, 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 blah. They're not going to put anything in writing because then at that point now you're going to litigate. You're going to litigate for harassment. You're going to litigate for uh, fraud. You know what I mean? So it's like when you when you understand how these things work, you can walk into you know a nice ass place and get yourself a nice brand new CA Corvette and walk out. And there's there's nothing they can do if they process those documents and they don't notice that special endorsement. That car's yours. So you will let yep. them run your credit first to get that application filed, and then you can claim the process or you can just go in there from the from the well, beginning like, hey, i want to speak to the cfo this is where things get a little complicated because i looked everywhere all over the internet for what is the definition of the word cash right and i and i searched forever and i could never find a decent definition then i went and read all of ucc3 ucc3 does not tell you the definition of the word cash but reading ucc3 i was finally able to figure out what the definition of the word cash is definition of the word cash is a physical negotiable instrument of which is endorsed payable to the bearer, meaning whoever holds the instrument holds the value payable to the bearer, payable to you as the one who's bearing the instrument, right? So when you have the credit application and you, and you, and you endorse the credit application with a special endorsement, you, the credit application itself is converted into cash. So it's a credit deal up until you endorse the credit application and then it becomes a cash deal. The problem is you can't explain any of this to anyone because they think you're totally, I mean, completely <laughs> insane. They, they, they're, they're like calling the paddy wagons to come have you like, you know, taken away by the freaking psychiatrists. I mean, they think you're just, they, they think you're just totally just gone. They think you're just a loon, you're a walking loony bin. That's the issue. And then you would endorse them normally like you would with the bill of exchange, like by uh, date, restricted endorsement. Well, no, you, you can do all that right in the signature lines of the promissory note while you're sitting there looking at your brand new C8. You're, it's right there. Yeah. You're with the finance director. But you would endorse it the same way. Yeah. And the thing is, is that some people take stamps in there and they think they need to use a stamp. Well, that's a red flag. You reach into your right. bag, you pop this big, huge stamp. Oh, give me just right. a second there. Boom. Yeah, you draw it's, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. I would take a black pen and just, you know, real low key, just, for, you know, I wouldn't tell anything, just like making them laugh. You know, like, them hey, can you give me some coffee? Can you give me some coffee? Man, I really use some coffee while I sign these. Would you mind? Would you mind? Oh, no, no problem, sir. No problem, Mr. Williams. Great, man. I really appreciate your help, Jim. You know, he walks out of the room and you're just, without recourse, pay to the order of Brandon Joe Williams in all capital letters by colon underscore Williams comma Brandon hyphen Joe uh, uh, comma agent. Next next paper, same thing, without recourse, blah, blah, blah. And you're just writing it with a black ink pen. Boom, 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 UCC 3-114. Next one, next one, next one, next one. And he's here to go. And then what does he do? He doesn't know a damn thing about any of this. So he's just going to go like this. He's going to go shh, shh, shh. Congratulations, Mr. Jim. Thank you so much. Blah, blah, blah. Once he gives you those keys, boy, you just got yourself a brand new C8 and you will never make a single payment for the rest of your life. For educational and informational purposes only. <laughs> <laughs> but litigation comes in. Litigation comes in because let's say, let's say Mr. Finance Director is a freaking falcon. And he looks down and he sees there's something weird about these documents. Ooh, that's going to be, you know, I don't know. He might say, you know, I'm really sorry. We can't process these, blah, blah, blah. Now, at that point, <laughs> there's not a whole lot you're going to say or do that's going to really change his mind. He's afraid of legal. He's afraid of a lot of things that are beyond your control. So at that point, 
uh, you know, the best thing you could do is you want to get something in writing, you know, uh, could you please just type me up like a little denial form that, that lets me know, like, why are you denying this? And, you know, if you can get something in writing, great. If not, uh, you know, the definition of an affidavit is just a sworn statement of, of facts of what occurred. You're going to write an affidavit and that's what's going to go into your complaint for your lawsuit. And you're just going to roll with the lawsuit and you're going to say, I did this and they didn't. And then now they're going to have to answer to the court and say, why didn't you process this guy's credit application? Oh, because it was signed in a weird way. OK, let's get that. Let's get that application submitted into the evidence in discovery. OK, now they submitted into discovery and now. It, now you're going to explain wh what's wrong with this. Oh, well, it's signed in a weird way. What does that mean? Signed in a weird way. There's ink in the box where it says signature. What's the problem? Oh, well, I was told by blah, 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 that they couldn't process this. Why? This is a special endorsement. Here's the actual <laughs> reference in UCC three dash whatever. Oh, well, uh, well, uh, and then at that point, the judge is going to be like, dude, he's showing you what this is. You're saying it can't be processed. That's just not true. You need to process it. And then they go, oh, okay, you know. So you're going to force them to process it, but you have to do it through the courts, you know. I'm going to be honest with you, though, man. Like, they'll probably never put that application in discovery. They'll just drop the damn case. You know what and I'm saying? I don't, think they, would, Maybe I don't think they would. I don't think they would put that because that would put too much out there. Like you said, it would just expose everything. Well, no, because the thing is, is that no one knows right. any of this information. So, so there's an attorney. I had, dude, I sent one email. I have my own little law firm. It's called Williams and Williams. One is the capital W and then lowercase. And then the other one is all caps, Williams and Williams law firm, right? It's kind of a play on the whole thing, right? So <laughs> Williams and Williams law firm, I have, a, I have a, a, a logo and I have a special letter and I have all this stuff. So I sent in and I, I have a client of mine and I sent to their attorney and said, hey, uh, I'm an attorney in fact for this particular person. And uh, I was very kind, and I said, hey, what I need is I need uh, copies of all the promissory notes that this particular person has signed under these particular loan numbers. And as soon as the attorney found out that I was an attorney, he sent me a Dropbox a folder with every single promissory note in all PDF forms, literally less than 24 hours. Hmm. Nice. So it, it can be done. You can do it. I mean, you know, it's it's... These people have no clue what we're doing. They don't have a clue. So they get an order from court that says submit the effing credit report, the credit application. They don't know what's going on. They just grab the credit application and place it in the evidence. They don't know. They have no idea. They think that, yeah, oh, yeah, great. Yeah, he signed the credit application. He owes the money. This is proof that he owes the money. I mean, I've had all these lawsuits that you see where the banks are going after the individuals. They, they take the freaking promissory notes and attach them as exhibits. They think that you signing the, the promissory note means that you owe the debt. They think it's evidence on their favor. And then you, they find out that it's actually directly against them evidence. And then they're a real hot water. But they didn't know that. They never knew that because they don't know the difference between a blank endorsement and a special endorsement. So you come in with a little smile and you ask for some paperwork and they just hang themselves. Yeah, somebody asked, was asking the Wolf Group earlier about um, something similar, not similar to what you're talking about, but endorsements with an IRS document. And they were like, um, they wanted to cover their grounds. How should they sign it? You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, yo, like any anything I sign personally or drop an autograph on is going to be all rights reserved, you know, without recourse, that type of thing. You know what I mean? You want to protect yourself at all times. Yeah, without recourse is, is basically the without prejudice for financial instruments. I mean, without recourse alone is just a beautiful, 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 beautiful thing. I mean, without prejudice is beautiful. All rights reserved is beautiful. But when it comes to financial documents, you got to have that without recourse. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. All right, gentlemen. Well, that brings us to two hours. We went over a little bits. Not the you know, um, we could probably talk all night. And all day. I'm sure people would love it because... <laughs> but um, uh, for us right here, we're going to um, take like, you know, three or four minutes after we shut this all down and then we can just kind of exchange information as those who want to, you know, catch up with each other and whatever else. Um, for everybody else watching, I want to thank you guys for um, being here and this whole screw up with the whole live thing, whatever else we got through it. Um, always vet your information. Do your work. 
Um, I'm going to turn the floor over to everybody else so they can just say, you know, their appreciations, where you can find them, how you can contact them, their YouTube channel, Facebooks, and whatever else. And they are, we're, we're going to call it a night, but we will bring you guys more uh, videos. I'm pretty sure uh, Brandon will be on again if he wants to come on um, when you got your, your you know, your, the course you were talking about uh, prepared. You can jump back on if you want. A6, young cousin, you're always welcome on here. Uh, Mikhail, pleasure, you know, uh, bringing Thank information, you, Thank you, like I said, between us and people hitting me up with the emails. Uh, we should be able to try to help you get through your scenario one way or another. Please, um, you know, we can talk later on after all this tomorrow, whatever. We'll, we'll see what's good. Email me. We'll put something together. Other than that, um, I guess, Mikhail, you can just say yours and then we'll jump over to A6 Perfect. and we'll close out with Brandon and then we'll uh, call, it, call it a thing. Perfect. Uh, I'm, I'm not much online, but the name is Mc, uh, Mikhail the Sultan at Proton.me, apparently, is the email address. Please don't, don't solicit anything illegal. Just try to help me with this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't hack also. No, no, not you, John. I'm just saying like, yeah, yeah, that's that. good, that's um, good, <laughs> but I guess just I'm trying to find my path on this. I'm trying to be righteous, trying to be, you know, praise to the most high. I'm, I'm blessed to have some information, some knowledge, and I look forward to learning more and doing more and helping more in the community. So I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. I know I didn't bring much to the table. I was just trying to observe. I know I was quiet, but I'm just trying to learn, you know, so. Hey, you brought you to the table and that's the most important thing out of everything we're talking about is real people, real souls and being there for each other as Americans and patriots and lovers of freedom, light, wisdom, knowledge and liberty, my brother. So you. you brought everything you need to. So thank you. With that being said, thank you. Uh, let's drop over to my cousin A6 and then we'll hit Brandon up. And we'll call it. Yes, indeed. A6, the foreign national, excuse me, the foreign national born natural. I messed my moniker up. As you can <laughs> tell, I've been offline for like two weeks. <laughs> but yes, indeed, man, I will be live and direct on uh, Thursday. We'll be making up for Sunday. We got a lot to chop up. Uh, the A6, uh, A-6 underscore grind time. As you can see right there, the name, that is my YouTube channel. So feel free if you're into this kind of talk to hop on. We will be chopping up game on there. I do have the uh, starting up the uh, uh, what is that thing? The Patreon. We just started that up, so that's we're starting to get that built up a little bit more. Um, you know, basically just doing things like that. Uh, if you want to look me up on Instagram, you could do so. A six grind time underscore. Uh, follow me on there. We share all kinds of crazy stuff about news. Uh, yeah, and if you want to hit me up and reach out, this A six A dash underscore. Excuse me, a dash six underscore grind time at protonmail.com. Uh, doing consultations and all that good stuff. So if you want to hit me up, you can do that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cousin Man. Uh, let's hit it up, Brandon, and then I'll, I'll close it out, and that'll be it. Yeah. A couple of years ago, when I first started studying all this, there, there wasn't a whole lot of people that were around that had good information. And actually, James, you're, you're, you were one of the main guys at that time period that I studied so much of. I studied so much of your stuff, your videos. I must have read your explanatory statement documents. I bought everything. I don't know if you remember. This was like two years ago. I emailed you and I bought everything you had. I was like, just give me everything you've got. And I was reading it, and and I mean, my my head felt like it was on fire. It was just really difficult, but I just really just grinded through everything and studied everything that I could of yours. It was some of the only information that I could even hope to connect with. It was just, you know, even just a couple of years ago, a lot of people don't realize there was not a whole lot out there. There was Copper Moonshine stills, and there was The Bad Wolf. I mean, seriously, I'm not kidding. When it comes to passport information and and a lot of the state versus federal citizen u.s citizen versus uh national information you know uh, a lot of the guys that i love uh, chris hauser a lot of other names i could drop they weren't specifically talking about this information the only people that were talking about this information at all were uh colonel wilson of copper moonshine stills who i'm going to have on my show hopefully in the next few months and uh and james so thank you very much james for everything uh you were a huge part of of my learning process uh for months probably four months all i did was was focus on your material and focus on on your videos and, and focus on your documentation you use a lot of your documentation so thank you so much i'm glad i've sent a lot of people to you and i will continue to do so um my name is brandon joe williams uh my website the clean version which will uh <laughs> I will, it, it'll, it'll redirect you to the actual website, but uh, just to keep it clean on this particular podcast, uh, it's don'tbeaslave.com. 
and uh, buckle up because it's 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 a uh, it's pretty intense and wild website and my my branding is pretty crazy. But some people like it, some people hate it. But it's kind of like very me. And I have a free contract killer course where I talk about a lot of this stuff and I do a lot of shout outs in the course about James specifically. So again, thank you so much, James. It's been a pleasure. Uh, love what you do. I think you're, you're such a huge, important part of all this. So um, big, big thank you. Big thank you to James. Um, I want to thank everybody as well. Uh, me and A6, we go back and forth all the time, you know, but uh, Brandon, I definitely remember when you reached out and I remember we had like a little light conversation here and there. And I was just like, yeah, go do it, bro. Like we need more people <laughs> to grab. You remember that? I remember saying yeah. Oh that. yeah, dude. I remember our conversations vividly because, yeah. because I'm one of a billion people for you. But at that time period, you were the only thing for me. So I remember it like it was yesterday. I remember everything. I do. I, I want to, I don't remember everybody. And I'll be honest. I know a lot of people hit me up all the time. Like, Oh, do you remember me? And I really, I, I'm not going to lie. Cause I'm not a liar. No, I know. I know. I, I don't, I, you know, cause I do, you know, anywhere between four to eight consults a day. I was doing it seven days a week at one point in time. Um, but I remember you and I just remember getting a feeling like, like he's going to do some things. He's going to, he's going to put some change into the system. Yeah. And I am, you know, not going to fanboy, but, uh, I will just say that, <laughs> I'm I'm proud of what you've done because I did this and took my life's work. I mean, I've been doing this since I was, you know, between nine and 19, starting this, learning the stuff. And I was like, everybody, everybody around me put me down. They were like, you're not oh, gonna yeah. do with it. They're like, you're crazy. You're not going to get any successes. You're not going to. And I wasn't doing this to make money. I mean, you know, like it was, it was I wanted this out there for the people and mm. making some money it was a side effect of that because when I get to talk to people who are happy to see me every day, I've never had a job where everybody is happy to talk <laughs> to me. Everybody, you know, I put it out there for the haters. If you want to talk to me, book a console player, you know what I mean? And not one, you know, they always want to jump in my chats and talk trash. You know, but, you know, you know. So I digress, but, but keep doing what you're doing. I'm glad to see you achieving the fame um it's it's amazing and thank you for for the homage to me i appreciate that because oh yeah you're the kind of person that i did this for you know what i mean yeah. like without knowing you i'm sitting here reading yeah. these books um i lost time with friends and family uh putting these things together trial and error getting my car towed going back and forth with the uh lawyers and the da yep. and then all of a sudden something shifted in there and i started winning all these cases boom boom yeah. boom uh, paid, 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 bench warrant, gone, this and that, woo, woo. Uh, and it's like, yeah, it is real. And then I started showing everybody where to get it. Then my next thing was I wanted to put it out there because this is a torch that none of us can carry forever. And yeah. so I basically went like this and you had your torch up. Same thing with six. And we share the light because there's times where six will give me stuff. There's stuff I learned from you too, Brandon. I watch your stuff. Nice. You know, when I, when I get time, which is, you know, very little, but I try. No, to. I know. I know. Trust um, me, I know. <laughs> and so we're sharing this fire so that we can share with other people. And that's the one thing I want to leave everybody here with tonight is that try to be better, you know, today than you were yesterday and so on and so forth. Believe in yourself, no matter what anybody tells you. Uh, vet the information for yourself and stand on it. One of the things I read in one of the court cases, and just to kind of throw this in into the mix, was that... Um, the law is written in such a way that if you have a different interpretation of the information, that can still yet be a considerable factor and player in whatever you're doing. So yeah. and they, I read that. I, I was like, oh, my God, this is this is incredible. That means you can actually say, well, my interpretation of this and be held, you know, that this is serious. <laughs> this is my yeah. understanding of it or overstanding of it. And then I think it's in the Bill of Rights. I think the last bill, and don't quote me on, I don't know if it's 10 or what, what number it was. I, I forgot to stop. But I liked it because it's it had an open-ended spot spot where it says, roughly, trans, roughly said, um, if in the future there's something, a right or a privilege or a freedom or a liberty that we haven't discussed here, mm -hmm. and you as an American basically feel like this is it needs to be included or I, I have the right to say this. You have the right to put it out there through that. Okay? That's the Ninth Amendment. 
Is it the ninth? Nope. Okay, I wasn't sure if the ninth, ninth the amendment. Yeah, the ninth amendment. Oh, yeah, the ninth, ninth amendment says that it, it just because there's something not listed in the uh, Constitution does not mean that it's not a right. It's mm-hmm. it just means that you know you can kind of confer anything. I mean, my interpretation of the ninth amendment is as long as you're not hurting anyone or swindling anyone, you can confer anything on yourself as a right. Essentially, it's the way I could, I interpret the ninth yep. amendment. Yep. Yeah, perfectly, perfectly said, brother, because and, and that makes it a very powerful tool to use. Yeah. So keep believing in yourselves, everybody. Uh, once again, Brandon, thank you for everything. Uh, sending the people who've come my way. Like I said, I mean, probably at least five people in the consultations a week. And I do probably about, you know, anywhere between 20 to 25 are people from they're like, yeah, Brandon recommending. I'm so glad. I oh, found wow, that's I great. That so it's a lot of people. This is fantastic. Yeah. And so, like I said, so I always do my shout outs anywhere some, where somebody supports me on their channel or whatever, I'll support right back. Because the it. one thing that the system and these haters, these guru types and whatever else want is for us not to come together. That's the big thing. And there's we so don't many, have, to have the there's, same info, but the same direction. And there's so many process wars. That's the thing. Everyone's arguing about processes. It's so stupid. So they're, many different. So many all, different processes. They're all okay. They're all fine. Yo, facts. Like secure they're party all, versus yeah. trust. Like, trust yeah. versus this, you know, estate versus like, yo, they can all work. If you it's know all how fine. You you can go into court and you can just start sticking knives at people's throats and guns in people's mouths and get anything to work. I mean, metaphorically speaking, <laughs> for, you, know, you, would, you would only put a gun in their mouth for educational purposes only, by the way, you know, <laughs> you're just trying to help educate them at a, at a higher rate of speed by making yes. them nervous and anxious by having a loaded gun in their mouth. See, it's for yes. educational purposes only. See, <laughs> Metaphorically, yes. yes, 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 yes. Metaphorically. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, Brandon, tell them where they can find you and anything you got upcoming, and then we'll close it out, brother. Uh, don't be a slave.com, and then you can get to my law firm website from there. And then um, I only have one case up right now on the website, Williams and Williams Law Firm.com, but I have three more that are going to be up there very, very soon. And we're getting specifically on these next three into forcing. Uh, mortgages and and these kinds of things to get processed, and then uh, that also includes damages as well. So it's it's our first real uh, entering the battle arena. It's our first actual UFC fight uh, in terms of getting these organizations and forcing these organizations to actually follow UCC three. So it's very exciting. I'm very very excited about it, and uh, I will be posting those three cases probably in the next like two weeks. I'll have all three posted to the website uh, Williams and Williams Law Firm dot com. Okay. And uh, are you cool with uh, people knowing your Facebook uh, group? Because don't you have a group on there or is that more of a private thing? The group is only for people who have completed the entire free course that I have. And they okay. have to and they have to show proof that they've already like tr- at least tried to do some things. They have to show some proof of some kind of action. Even if it wasn't really successful, we don't just open the floodgates for the group. It just gets to be too... It's just not really what the group's there for. It's it's right. it's not it's not there to be that chaotic and to handle the same really like kind of rookie questions <laughs> over and over and over again. It's it's a little bit more of a I it's very action based. It's a very 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 action based group and you have to as we all know, uh, you know, you really do kind of have to be familiar with this information and kind of like wade in it for a little while before you're going to be willing to take action there's not that many people that just fly out the door and start taking action right away which that's normal so it's not really for that you know yeah we got the same thing going on telegram we've got the main group where it's kind of all the rookie questions and i got my admins over there who kind of field and don't mind that like we've been through we got the process we've been successful then we got the more private group for the more advanced stuff. You know, sometimes you get a couple yeah. of leakers to slide in there or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and everybody and everybody in those groups are like, oh. ah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But it's funny because everybody like started there. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. How did they arrive? What are they hey, doing? You know, Call security. <laughs> escort him out, you know. Uh, but we, you know, so if somebody does straggle in, we, we just go, okay, we got you, but we just can't have an influx of all the beginner steps. So, um, but with that being said, once again, uh, thank you to everybody who watches this. Um, we're all in this together. Um, without you guys watching and supporting all of us, we wouldn't be able to continue to do what we're doing. 
Uh, Cause I know because of you guys, I've gone to be able to do this full time, which helps me to, you know, just live the life I wanted to do, which is just to do more nerd stuff, read more books, <laughs> get better at the craft. You know what I mean? Um, so thank you guys for helping. And that's why like we, we try to give back and show you guys how to make your daily lives a little bit easier. Um, Cause at the end of the day, that's what people really want. You know, you know, is everybody wants to pie in the sky, but if I can just live a little bit better mm. the next day, learn a little bit more to live a little bit better. That's better because it seems like before this information and people like us, you know, shot to Colonel Von Wilson. And I think at the time for me, there was only like a couple of people and I'll, I'll even be the same. I'll, you know, Yusuf L was one of the people out there who had some stuff out there. Um, mm -hmm. Jackie Fig, God rest his soul. Um, and a handful of others. Uh, you're uh, learned a little from David Strait, a little from Tom, uh, not Tom, but I can't. Uh, his name is McDonald. I can't think of his first name, but there wasn't a whole lot, you know. Patrick Devine. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So hat goes off to those people and to the uh, council here. Thank you guys as well. I appreciate you. With that being said, everybody have a great night, have a great week, and uh, we'll talk to you guys later. For the rest of us, we're gonna stay after this, but everybody else, we appreciate you. And we'll talk and see you guys later. So thank you for the support. All right.